Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships right here at Co-op Community Complex. We're going to start a little bit early this morning, and we will start with race number one. We would like to welcome everybody that is watching on the internet at cooldown.tv. Race number one will be Relic Mod. Superstock 300 fan cooled free air. This is a combo final for three laps. The 13 is Kieran Lowe and the 69 is Colin Demianic. The 501 is Mike Kelly out of St. Genevieve. The 179, this is Jason Mackey out of Lanigan, Saskatchewan on a 1971 Articat. The 94 is Brian Kep out of Rosewood. And the 57 is Ken Bruce out of St. Anne. 57 is a scratch. The 57 Ken Bruce is a scratch. Scratch that off of your lineup sheets. FXR bringing you this great event. Of course, an excellent event yesterday. Looking forward to more of the same on a breezy Manitoba morning here as we get set with our first race of the day for FXR. I'd like to thank Beaver Truck Center as well. As Oak Bank Hearing Center doing a great job sponsoring our event here in 2024. Sixty nine Colin Demiatic showing the way the one seventy nine Jason Mackey in the second spot Jason out of Lanigan Saskatchewan on a 1971 Arctic cat and looking pretty good on that cat as he challenges the leader down the back straightaway. Thirteen is third that is Kieran Lowen out of Winnipeg. That is a cool looking 71 Yamaha I saw that in the pits yesterday and good looking machine. Love those old Yamis. 69, 179 in the 13 in the top three. Kieran Lowen still riding along in third. Mike Kelly on the 501 is out of St. Genevieve, fourth on the 71 Skidoo. Uh oh, we've got a get off. Look at that on the back shoot. Looks like Colin Demianic crashes at the entrance to turn number three. We're gonna see if we can get a cooldown.tv replay there, but I don't know if there was contact back there or what the situation was. But that sled doesn't look the same as when it started, I can tell you that. There is some damage there. Anthony and Chris working cooldown.tv and doing a great job. There's the 179 back to the start finish line. Jason Mackey out of Lanigan, Saskatchewan as our safety crew goes to work. I don't know if the 69 got caught in the wind back there or what the situation was. It is breezy as heck here. Think about 70, 80 kilometer an hour winds which translates to about 45 to 50 miles per hour for those of you south of the border. All right, we don't have that replay. All right, looks like the 13 involved back there. Kieran Lowen out of Winnipeg, the 71 Yamaha. We were talking about that sled a little earlier, so. We are going to restart this race. Looks like the 501. Mike Kelly out of St. Genevieve. Going to start second. Of course, the 179 of Jason Mackey starting first. And the 94, Brian Kep out of Rosewood, Manitoba. That is a... 1970 moto ski as we get set to go racing here we go once again the 179 of jason mackey lifts the skis of the arctic cat that is a 1971 arctic cat for jason mackey out of lanagan saskatchewan this relic mod super stock 300 fan cooled free air combo race scheduled originally for three laps and I already see the checkered flag in the hands of Riley Baker, our head flagman. 
which tells me we have two down and one to go, and that was the last lap here as they took the green flag. Checkered for the 179. No problem there for Jason Mackey. The 501 will come second. Mike Kelly out of St. Genevieve getting a little better payday as a result of the earlier crash. And the 94, Brian Kep out of Rosewood will finish third. That'll do it for our race one on the day. Looking at our schedule right now, looking like 46 races today, 46. Of course, race 46 will be the Canadian Power Toboggan Championships with the Pro Champ 440s. Great time now to thank some of our sponsors. They include FXR, Beaver Truck Center, Bozizer Co-op, Bozizer General Motors, Cobra Enterprises, Travel Manitoba, Moosehead and Twisted Tea, of course, available over at the Moose Den. Access Credit Union, Bozizer Home Hardware, Oakwood Hearing Center, RM of Broken Head, and Town of Bozizer. Race two coming up with some of the stars of Oval Track Racing. Race two is Pro Formula 3, round one for five laps. On the 39, he is sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing. This is Tom Olson out of Greenbush, Minnesota. 2024 Polaris Wall Chassis. Riding the number six is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City, Minnesota. The 21 is Zach Rogers out of Wausau, Wisconsin. The 28 is Matt Gady, the current world champion in that class. Matt Gady is out of New Germany, Minnesota on the 2023 Skidoo. The 29 is Andy Shoemaker. The 102 out of the Wall Brothers camp, also sponsored by FXR from St. Cloud, Minnesota. The 102 is multi-time champion Blaine Stevenson. The 92 is Haven Bouveret out of Michigan on the Polaris. Riding the 221 is Reed Klinger out of Athens. The 220 is G-Bunny Gunnar Stern out of West Chicago, Illinois. 2023 Skidoo. And the 129 is Joey Birch out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Gunnar Stern doing a great job last night in the Pro Champ 440s, winning the USSA Pro Star Cup round here in Bozizer, the final one of the 24 season. And he was fast, leading Matt Gady in the Pro Champ 440s. We got somebody in the hay bales in turn one. It looks like a good start for the 129 of Joey Birch. That is the 28 of Matt Gady, we believe. Yes, it is. Tough break for Matt Gady. Look at that. He's fixing the bales himself. This guy's serious. He wants to get out of there with that sled. All right, thanks very much, Anthony. So, we talked about the winds a little earlier, about 45 to 50 miles per hour. It is blowing like crazy here, and we are unable to have corner cameras for those of you watching cooldown.tv. So we apologize for that, but we have had hay bales blowing off here today. It's so windy. So, just so you know, we're going to do our best with the cooldown.tv broadcast. We appreciate you tuning in. We've got a great crew here, but they can't stand in front of the wind all day and hide the cameras I can tell you that it's uh it is windy here like crazy all right working race number two pro formula three round one for five laps now in the pit area in staging should be sportsman 600s looks like Kyle Omachinski will be a scratch in that one that's race three on the day Race four, Black Cat Wear Parts F500s, and we'll do that three times in a row. That'll be race four, race five, and race six for Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. So if you're in those first six races or so, well, you need to be in staging or thinking about getting there at least so you're not late. We did have an early start here in Bozizer, originally scheduled for 11 o'clock and start at about 10.30. Don't forget we also finish off the Jerry Monkey Memorial Cup Challenge. We had a couple of heat races yesterday. We'll have two more today. And then of course that is an overall point series in the Jerry Monkey Memorial Challenge sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises, PJ Materic Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Hildebrand Sod Farm, Baxter Ranch, Rantec Industrial Limited, and Sport Parts 
Incorporated. All right, so just awaiting some cleanup over there in turn number one and two. Riley Baker is our head flagman on the front straightaway as we get set to do some more racing here. As we talked about, we have a total of 46 races on our schedule here for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR here on Sunday, March 3rd, 2024. Don't forget, you can log on to cptcracing.com until 2.30 today and vote for the Rider of the Weekend in the Pro Champ 440s. Just get on there and vote and we will crown rather a Rider of the Weekend in the Pro Champ 440 division. That is at cptcracing.com. Well, all new lighting in 2024 for this fine half mile facility. Also new sound system as of a couple of weeks ago. So we are working out some stuff with audio. The lighting working absolutely fantastically last night and even in December, of course. All new LED lighting, a huge capital project here for the co-op community complex. But they did a great job and this place was lit up like daylight last night and some great race action all day and last night here in Beausager. Right, we're gonna try this again now. And it looks like we're gonna restart this race sans Matt Gady on the 28. Two-time world champion in the Pro Formula 3 class. That is the world championship class in Eagle River now for the last three years. And Matt Gady has won it twice, the last two in a row. Looks like the 102 with a pretty good start. That is the Wall Brothers Racing entry of Blaine Stevenson out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Look at him, three wide, making it four wide now into turn three. That corner is going to get narrow in a great big hurry as they bump around and trade some paint out of turn four. Great racing action. Joey Birch on the 129 having a pretty nice ride here. The 102, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing and FXR, has that sled pointed in the right direction and looking pretty quick. A strong contingent of Pro Formula 3 riders here today in Beausager as they head off into turn number three and four, they are moving right along. Great racing action in turn one and two as they come out of two and down the back straight away. Great battle for the lead. The 102 and the 129 of Birch are duking it out. Pass for the lead down the back straightaway. The 129 is in a hurry on the inside of turn number three. Your winner of the 129 followed by the 102. I'm gonna have to try to get you third place. That number was ineligible or in ineligible to three of us up here. We couldn't read the number, so we'll try to find out who finished third there for you here. So we'll get you that official finish here momentarily in the Pro Formula 3s. 
But a great job at the end there. Wow, what a race that was. The 129 Joey Birch out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan, riding that 2023 Polaris past another Polaris, the 102 of Blaine Stevenson out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Sportsman 600 should be up next. All right, we're going to await that official finish there in the Pro Formula 3s. I do want to get that to you as soon as I can. So as soon as I get it, I will pass it along. We are on race number three, Sportsman 600s. Sounds like the 15 of Kyle Omachinski at a Bozager will be a scratch. The 08 of Brad Artimowicz is at a Dryden. The 179 is Jason Mackey from Lanigan, Saskatchewan. The 44X is Randy Oliver. The 13, John Hall from Bozager. Riding the 16 is DJ Saluka to Bozager. The 3 is Scott Wagner. And the 779 is Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan. That's your lineup for race 3 in the Sportsman 600s brought to you by FXR. All right, Jason Mackey is a scratch on the 179 in this one, as is the 15 of Omachinski. All right, going back to the Pro Formula 3s, we understand third was the 221 of Reed Klinger out of Athens, Wisconsin. So it was Joey Birch, Blaine Stevenson, and Reed Klinger in our race before, race two in the Pro Formula 3s. Reed Klinger on the 221 was third. We just couldn't make out his number. And here we go, we are racing the 13 up front. Eighty-nine miles per hour. The thirteen John Hall out of Bozager looking good. The seven seventy-nine is Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan. Two thousand Polaris. DJ Saluk on the sixteen in the third spot. Seven seventy-nine takes the lead. Colton Kreitzer. We've got ourselves a race here in. Race three, Sportsman 600s, round number one here. This is fantastic racing. Randy Oliver, fourth, he is out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin on a 1999 Polaris. 7-7-9 seven, seven, in the 13, getting at it. Look at this race out of turn four. Uh-oh. That's a quick way to say hello. DJ Saluk takes the lead. Looks like the 7-7-9 seven, seven, is off the track. Wow. Look at this race, it just doesn't quit. All right, there is your finish, the 16-13 and the 44X. DJ Saluk first, Jonathan Hall on the 13th second and the 44X, Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh in the third spot. Tough break for the 7-7-9 of Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan. On the 2000 Polaris, he had a good run there and a little bit of contact, a little bit of rubbing. And, well, a trip back to the pit area for the 779 of Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan. All right, so we are moving on to three in a row, race four, five, and six of Black Cat Wear Parts F500 competition. First race, race four, will be round one, heat one. Riding the 98 is going to be Nick Kurth out of Wausau, Wisconsin. The 9 is Stefan Kerrigan from Winnipeg. The number 3 is out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec on a 1991 Polaris. The pilot is Danique Lambert. The number 99 is Connor Bauman out of Wisconsin. Now the 113 on your schedules is a question mark yet. We'll see if Kendra Westland is able to make the line. She is making it fantastic. 
great racer. Kendra Westland on the 113 out of Strathcona will make the call. The 22A is Colton Abraham from Wausau, Wisconsin. The 33C is Mike Schultz from Thunder Bay, Ontario on a 97 Yamaha. And rounding out the field in race four, the 48X is Rich Mork out of Eagle River, Wisconsin. This is race four on your daily schedule. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action coming your way for the first time today. Danny Lambert out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec, having a quick conversation with Riley Baker, our head flagman. F500 racing, always very competitive. We'll see some more of that right now as we get set to go racing. Good start for the 48C. We are racing down the back straightaway. Looks like the 22A from this vantage point coming out of turn number four. That is the 22A up front and in command. 22A is Colton Abraham out of Wausau, Wisconsin, riding a 1991 Polaris. 81 miles per hour on the previous lap. Twenty two A in command here. There's the ninety eight in the second spot. Nick Kurth out of Wausau, Wisconsin. And third is the number three of Danny Lambert. Twenty two A is running the string out on the rest of the field here. 48X is fourth. That is Rich Mark. Rich is out of Eagle River, Wisconsin. Hope you're enjoying the racing action so far for FXR. 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships are here. And we are going to have a great day of motorsports action. I'd like to thank all of our sponsors and all of you great fans for coming out and enjoying the show with us here today. Yesterday we had a great time, started during the day, 1 o'clock. Finished about 8 o'clock or so, I think, under the lights, and it was fantastic. Checkered is out. The 22A is going to take that one. Ninety-eight in the second spot, and the three of Danny Lambert will round out the top three. Danny Lambert out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec, on the nineteen ninety-one Polaris. So that'll do it for race four. Black Cat Wear Parts F five hundred action. Round one, heat one is in the books. We will do that again in race number five. This will be round one, heat number two for Black Cat Wear Parts F five hundred action. All right, what's going on around the facility? Well, of course, we have the concession area open. They have delicious cheeseburgers, french fries, hot dogs, coffee, hot chocolate, and all kinds of other great stuff. Do check out the concession area. The food there is awesome. Hey, Anthony, you had a chicken burger yesterday, didn't you? That's what I heard, and I heard it was fantastic. All right, it was amazing, says Anthony. And Guys from cooldown.tv don't lie, so if you're looking for a great chicken burger... Head on over to the concession area. We also have the Moose Den open. That is the beer garden, serving ice cold twisted tea and moose head products. Race five coming up. The 213 Aaron Davy out of Middle River is going to be a scratch. Hanna Westland will be in this one on the 113 out of Strathcona. The 14 will be James Schneider out of Bozeger. 34X is Kale Bellow out of Wappen, Wisconsin. The 54, this is Tom Keelback from Tyndall. 
134 is Colton Newalney out of Medford. Keep your eyes on that driver. And the 135 is Blair McDonald out of Ile Deschain, Manitoba. Blair is on a 1989 Polaris here in race five. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action set to come your way. Looks like James Schneider on the 14 with a pretty good start right off the line there. James Schneider is out of Beauxjeux, Manitoba on a 1989 Polaris. It seems to have dropped back some now down on the back chute. We will see what happens as they come down the front chute. 34, Niewalny. 54 and the 14 is your top three currently. Tom Keelback is on the 54 out of Tyndall, and of course the 14 is James Schneider. 34X, Kale Bella out of Wappen, Wisconsin to the inside of the back chute. As your leader's coming out of turn four already. Colton Diewolny just running the string out here. About a half a straightaway lead now on his nearest competition in second spot. Fifty-four remains second. The thirty-four X is third. 135, Blair McDonald in the fourth spot out of Ile de Chaine, Manitoba on a 1989 Polaris. 14 is fifth, that is James Schneider. White flag coming out this time around for your race leader with almost a straightaway lead now. Well, no question about this one. Out of Medford, Wisconsin, the 34, Colton Niewalny has been awful fast and wins this one going away. 54, Keelback, the 34X third is Kale Bilal. Then the 135, Blair McDonald, fourth unofficially. And the 14 is James Schneider out of Bozeger unofficially in the fifth spot in race five. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. And Hanna Westland on the 113 out of Strathcona, Minnesota. That is a 1992 Polaris coming across the line to end race number five officially. All right, we're gonna do it again for Black Cat Wear Parts, another F500 race. Did someone just fly off their sled? Sure they did. We're not even racing yet. Oh, talk about starting your morning off tough. We have somebody off their sled before they reach the staging area. That looks like the 15 of Kyle Omachinski. I wonder what the heck happened there. The hood is busted. Did it fly apart or did he get hit back there? I was just about to go through the lineup and we've got a crash already. I don't think I've ever seen a crash before I've gone through the lineup. Just rolled it, eh? Okay. All right. Well, that's what happened. Well, we're going to go through the lineup anyway. As a recovery, that's unusual. Race number six up. The 685 is going to be Tanner Davey out of Middle River, Minnesota on an 89 Polaris. The 95, Jerry LePage is from Marillo, Ontario, the veteran on the 89 Polaris. The 21 is Zach Rogers from Wausau, Wisconsin. The 17, Jared Sackvey is from Beauxjeux. The 003 is going to be Brody Wensloff from Roseau, Minnesota on a 1990 Polaris. The 9, Dane Klinger, is out of Athens, Wisconsin. And the 29 is Brad Harrison out of Anola on an 89 Polaris. Kyle Omachinski, I think, is going to 
head back to the pit area. Now, he was penciled into this race. It's not on our official lineup sheets, but he was penciled in earlier, but now we're going to erase him out. Well, we always talk about it, Anthony. Anything can happen in snowmobile ice oval racing. Incredible sport for that. Very, very unpredictable. Dane Klinger on the nine on the inside of this one as we get set to go racing. Good start for the number nine from the inside. Dane Klinger out of Athens, Wisconsin on a 1990 Polaris as the pack heads on through and down the back straightaway. Great racing going on for second, third, and fourth. And for fifth, sixth, and seventh as well. Zach Rogers is on the 21. The 17 is Jared Sackvey. And of course, Dane Klinger is leading this one. So that is your top three so far in race six, Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. Looks like the number 29 making things interesting. That is none other than Brad Harrison out of Enola, Manitoba, 1989 Polaris. 80 miles per hour on the previous lap. Great action between the 17 and the 29 of Harrison. And look at that in turn one and two. The 29 on the outside, clawing away. They are side by side, down the back straightaway, and a great race ensuing in turn number three. White flag coming out for the leader this time around. Dane Klinger showing the way and showing no signs of letting up. 29 now third, and looking at the tail light of second place, there goes the 29 on the outside of turn three. What a race. Dane Klinger on the nine coming to the checkered flag. He's got it. And at the line, it looks like barely the 21 over the 29. So Zach Rogers out of Wausau, Wisconsin, taking it over Brad Harrison out of Enola on the number 29. Wow, what a great race. Race six, Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. Round one, Heat three is in the books. One of the best races of the day. Race seven coming up momentarily. Super Mod 300 free air and liquid cooled final for four laps. The 13 is Kieran Lowen. The 165 is Justin Habing. Riding the 65 is Norm Chura. And the 233 is Matt Bennett out of New London, Wisconsin. Race eight. After this, we'll be Outlaw 600s. All right, here we go. We are set to go. Super Mod 300 free air and liquid. Norm Chura takes the lead on the 65. The 233 is Matt Bennett out of New London in second. The 165 is out of Dougald, Manitoba on a 73 Polaris. Justin Habing third, at least momentarily.
72 miles per hour on the previous circuit. Next up, the sprint car slash snowmobiles. The Outlaw 600s are up next. Norm Chura leading 233. Chasing him, Matt Bennett out of New London, Wisconsin on the 73 Polaris. I don't know how many laps Norm Chura on that number 65 has here in Beauxjour, but it is countless, I'm sure. He has been here for many, many years and does a fantastic job aboard that 1973 Polaris. Norm Chura on the 65. White flag, one to go. Matt Bennett in the second spot. Nobody to challenge those riders. There's the 165 well back. Justin Habing out of Dugald. And Norm Chura will take checkers, followed by the 233 of Matt Bennett out of New London, Wisconsin on the 73 Polaris. Outlaw 600s up on the track. The 44W is David Webster. The 18, Aria Plasky. The 36, Tom Stoltman. The one is Joe Schneider out of St. Germain, Wisconsin. Driving the 19 is Chris Plasky. The four is Ron Teroff with the four stroke out of Lisbon, Iowa. The 3XL is Shorty Curran. And the 71N is Donnie Neubauer. Now, just like a dirt track sprint car, these will have a rolling type start. Outlaw 600, race eight, round one for five laps coming up. Full roll cages, a seat and seat belts in these particular entries, and they are pretty cool. Good start for the 44. David Webster out of Monroe, Wisconsin. That is a 2018 Articat. Joe Schneider on the one is second, points leader in USSA Outlaw Racing. There goes the number four of Ron Teroff out of Lisbon, Iowa. That is an Eagle chassis. Seventy-one in the four spot. Donnie Neubauer out of Westboro, Wisconsin. Eighty-two miles an hour on the previous circuit. They are moving right along here in the Outlaw 600 class. Allowing the 1,000 cc four stroke and working out their engine rules day by day, we are told. 600s are allowed some pipe and head work. As the four of Teroff leads this one with Joe Schneider coming really fast to the inside of turn three, and it looks like the one has got the lead, Joe Schneider. Joe Schneider now lengthening that lead just a bit. Looks like the 44 was heading off, but is back on track. David Webster. White flag for the number one of Joe Schneider.
and checkered flag is out for the number one of Joe Schneider. The four of Teroff will finish second in the Outlaw 600s and Plasky in the number 19 will finish third. Chris Plasky is out of St. Germain in the 19 with a Eagle chassis taking third spot. All right, that'll do it for the Outlaw 600s. I want to welcome everybody that's tuned in to cooldown.tv. We are moving into race number nine, Super Mod 340 Liquid, Super Stock 440 Liquid. This is a combo classic, and I'll give you the lineup momentarily. All right, the 233 is Matt Bennett out of New London, Wisconsin on a 73 Polaris. Riding the 79 out of Drummondville, Quebec, Supergirl, Sabrina Blanchett. First time ever this weekend here at CPTC. And I, we again want to welcome her and her great crew. Had an opportunity to spend some time in their trailer on Friday and they have got a first class operation. Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl on the 79 here in race nine. The 65 is Norm Chura out of Enola, Manitoba. The 165 is Justin Habing out of Dugold. Is that a scratch? 38 is Leah Baxter, but is scratched. So scratch the 38. Now riding the 96 is not Clayton, but it is Josh Wood. Josh Wood will be on the 96 out of Swift Current. The 44 is Vic Mazer out of West St. Paul. The 223 is Adam Braun, and the 13 is Kieran Lowen. Kieran Lowen on the 13 out of Winnipeg. We'll run a 1980 Yamaha here. So this is race nine, Super Mod 340 Liquid, Super Sock 440 Liquid Combo Classic. Final for five laps. Let's take a good look as they get set to go. Good start for the 79 and the 44. Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl with the whole shot here early in race nine. Vic Mazur is out of West St. Paul, Manitoba on a 1973 Polaris. Number 44 looking pretty good. But not quite enough so far for the 79 of Sabrina Blanchett. Norm Chura on the 65, riding that 73 Polaris so far to the third spot. Could get a good race going here between second and third place momentarily. But Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl, out of turn four, moving along very nicely. Chura trying to close on the 44 of Mazer, the 223. That is a 81 Kawasaki. The rider is Adam Braun on the 223. In the top five currently here in race number nine, Super Mod 340 Liquid and Super Stock 440 Liquid Combo Classic. 165 is in the fifth spot. That is Justin Habing out of Dougal. Look at this race now between the 44 and the 65 for second and third. Chura in the second spot, Mazer third. Sabrina Blanchett in the number one spot with more than a straightaway lead here. <laughs> 79 miles per hour. Checkered flag is out, not much question about that one. Your winner, Supergirl, Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec. Chura, then Mazer in the top three on the 44. 223, Adam Braun on the Kawasaki fourth and the 165 of Justin Habing is fifth out of Dugold. Next up, race 10, ATVs.
All right, ATV Open set to come your way. Race 10 before a Quebec intermission break. The 22 is Mike Verbruge. The 29, Corey Johnson. Riding the 44 is Ethan Clark. The 27 is Lynn Sather out of Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. The 17 is Austin Lewandowski from Winnipeg. The 14 is Rob Clark from Bozager. And the 7 is Ryan Gibson, also out of Bozager on a 1986 Honda. Mike Verbruge out of Garson getting pushed off on the 22. Unable to go for race 10. As we race them into turn number one and two. This will be our last race before a Quebec's intermission break. Second spot right now is the number 27. That is Lynn Sather out of Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. 71 miles an hour for the top three riders as they headed down into turn number one. That is where our radar gun is located. Seven is your leader, of course. And that is Ryan Gibson out of Bozager doing a nice job up front on the 1986 Honda. This one's scheduled for five laps and we've got four down. The seven and the 27 doing battle, Gibson and Sather. Corey Johnson, third out of Oak Bank on a 2007 Yamaha. As the race continues in turn three and four here, we have got a battle. Your winner, Ryan Gibson. Second spot is the number 27, Lynn Sather out of Detroit Lakes. That was a good finish. 29 is third, Corey Johnson, 14. That is Rob Clark out of Bozager, fourth unofficially. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that'll do it. It is now time for a Cubex intermission break. We'll do a grooming break here. We invite you over to the Moose Den for an ice cold one. You can also get on over to the concession area, get a delicious cheeseburger. They have French fries, hot dogs, and all kinds of other great stuff. So do check out the concession area during our Cubex grooming break. We're going to be back with you momentarily with more at the 62nd Canadian Powered Toboggan Championships.
Full service at your local co-op means extra service at no extra cost. We'll fill your tank, clean your windshield, and get you on your way. And full service is part of why co-ops are able to provide good jobs to more than 25,000 Western Canadians. Whether it's rainy in Victoria, sunny in Regina, cold in Edmonton, or even colder in Winnipeg, full service, it's a co-op thing. Whether investing in your child's future, planning your dream retirement, or saving for a vacation in between, Access Credit Union has the right investment solution for every stage in your life. Open an investment online in minutes and get sound advice tailored to your needs. As members ourselves, you'll feel comfort in knowing we have your best interest at heart. Access Credit Union, invest in you. We've got guys from automotive, we've got guys from heavy duty. Everybody helps everybody. Every day I get to come into something different, so it's always fun and exciting. You'll do everything from a PDI up to a full engine rebuild. It's hard work, but it's good work. Are you looking for a great place to work? Brett Richter here at the CPTC in Beausjour, Manitoba. We are getting ready to run the 62nd edition of the Canadian Power Toboggan Championship. And I am very happy to have with me last season's winner, uh, Blaine Stevenson. Welcome, Blaine. Thanks for having me. Yeah, glad to have you back up here in Canada. Yeah, we wouldn't miss it. It's a great event, um, premier crown jewel, so happy to be back. Nice to have some ice, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, track, as usual here, looks great. Um, practice time today and Friday is always a bonus, and uh, CPTC rarely lets us down, so yeah, it's been awesome. Good, good. Um, you're coming in here as the previous champion. There's a strong, strong field in the Pro Champ Division this mm -hmm. year, 27 registered, and I think I've seen every one of them here. So you got your work cut out for you. Yeah, well, based on the season we've had, yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, more down than up this year, I think, so we're... We've got some, uh, you know, we've done a, a little bit of work over the time that we've had off, and um, yeah, we need to be perfect to have a shot. You do, you do. Um, you brought it up, and I guess last year you were so dominant in the Pro Champ class and in the Pro Star Cup Tour. This year hasn't gone that way for you. Uh, it looks right now like there's skidoos at the top of the top three spots and potentially on the podium. What changes in a year? Honestly, we don't know. We're not that far off of time, speed, things like that. 
um, that we were last year. And I think there's a few, you know, <clears throat> I've had a few drives that have not been good. Mm -hmm. um, so very, you know, can look in the mirror and, and say that I've, you know, I gave away the Bonnachere Cup, a um, uh, few different other races. You know, we just didn't feel competitive in Valcourt. So, um, yeah, it's, it's weird year to year that we go through that, but team's been working hard and we're, we're confident we can compete the rest of the, you know, compete right. this weekend, so. Sure, yep. Yeah, there sure is a lot going on this year too. It's, it's just been a unique year with travel, with ice conditions and all types of stuff. So um, I think everybody's battling through it and some are, some are doing a little bit better than others, but I know that you bring your A game every time you can. Um, who's here at the track that helps you, helps you make that happen? Yeah, so everybody at the, well, obviously my wife comes to all the races, my mom and dad, um, crew in the sled every weekend, but a uh, huge shout out to the Wall Brothers, Dave Dermont, everybody back at the shop, um, Dustin, Jeff, Terry, Jordan, Mary, Brandon, um, Tom, everybody that uh, helps us out there. You know, we're working really hard. So <clears throat> um, thank the rest of the crew too, the whole Betcher family. Uh, they'll all be here this weekend, so we're excited to have everybody. Um, and then all of our sponsors, Polaris, Walker Evans, Woody's Traction, FXR, Walker Evans, um, all the wall sponsors, uh, Ultimax Belts, RCCA Co-op, um, Camso, Power Madden. There's a whole list of them. That's those. a list. Yeah, Omni Training Facility. <laughs> yeah. but never want to forget anybody. <laughs> no, no, you certainly don't. Yeah, I think I still um, do. <laughs> I have a technical question for you that I, that I think people would find interesting. You shared a GoPro video when you were racing and your belt flipped. Mm -hmm. uh, showed a sudden change in RPM, a jerk to the machine, just a whole bunch of different things. As I'm talking to people I know about snowmobiling, we don't understand how a belt flips. Can you talk us through that a little bit? Yeah, we don't fully understand either. Ah, but okay. <laughs> basically, you're right, where you, you know, our champ sled spin 10,000, 10,300 RPM, so we, we turn a lot of RPMs, um, and we, we really bury the belt on each side of the clutch. So you're running as much sheave on the primary, and you're running it as deep into the secondary as you can. We're trying to optimize our speed that way and, and clutching efficiency and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, Valcourt's, Valcourt has not been good to us with belts. Um, we blew one while we were leading in 2020. We blew one the heat before 2023. Luckily, we, it, during the final, everything held together. But um, um, you know, even back to when we were running our own sled, like we had belt troubles. So uh, it's definitely made us scratch our head, but um, you know, a lot of RPM, uh, a lot of you know, clutch, Adjustments. Adjustments mm -hmm. and uh, just happens. You get a rough track, so right. it happens. You were able to correct that, weren't you? Because there was a red flag? Yeah, got a red um, with not many laps to go and uh, was able to flip it over. And, and you know, honestly, we were surprised, one, that it didn't blow while it was flipped. And then, two, um, that it held together as well as it did. Like it didn't chunk anywhere. Um, it's a tough old bird there. So, uh, yeah, I got it flipped over and, and I, I went in, you know, we break in belts all the time, but um, I took off from the paddock first and I made as much, as, did as much driving around as I could, getting it through the sheaves, trying to, you know, make sure that it, it, it was conformed back to the sheaves as much as it could be. Um, there really wasn't a lot of rubber on the, on the clutches, so. Uh, kind of was kind of excited, and, and then we started driving up to him. A few more laps would have been yeah. would have been interesting. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, uh, but that's the way the season's gone, right? A yeah. few more laps, it would have been interesting. No doubt. That'd be the name of the season for you. Correct. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna wrap this up with what we are calling the FXR Fast Ten. Sweet. All right. You ready? Mm-hmm. French fries or onion rings? French fries. Blondes or brunettes? Blondes. <laughs> A blonde. A blonde. One <laughs> one solo. <laughs> uh, mountain bike or road bike? Oh, road bike lately. Okay. Dimples or freckles? Freckles. Fleece or flannel? Flannel. Would you rather go camping or go to a beach? I'd rather go camping. Dance class or a cooking class? A cooking class. If you were dating, would you use a dating app or would you be old school? Oh, I'm a pretty old school guy. Luckily, I don't have to deal with the dating scene. <laughs> Ketchup or mustard? Ketchup. Don't get this one wrong. Reese's or Snickers? I always forget which one it is. Snickers. Oh. You want to try again? Reese's. Thank you. I could have both. <laughs> Driver of the number 102 Polaris, Mr. Blaine Stevenson. Good luck. Stay safe. Thanks.
to the front straightaway very soon.
Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. We've got a great day of motorsports action set to come your way. Tremendous action here yesterday. New lighting system, new sound system, tremendous track preparation, and one of the best crews you will find in oval snowmobile racing anywhere. Before we get on with the day, we have a few very important people that need to speak to address the crowd and talk a little bit about this facility and this great area. I want to start out by introducing Mr. James Bazan, the MP of Selkirk Interlake. Thank you, Darren. How's everybody doing? These are the true fans that came out in the big win. So first of all, I just want to thank Everyone that's involved with the uh, Canadian Power Toboggan Championships, you know, the, the premier race in, in snowmobile racing in, in Canada happens right here in the great community of Bozier. So to Jared and the entire board of directors and all the volunteers who are involved, thank you so much for putting this on year in and year out, and here we are at year number 62. That's an amazing accomplishment. I'd also want to thank all the sponsors who are involved in making sure that this takes place and providing that monetary uh, support to ensure that we can put on a great show on this ice track. You know, this is a weekend that we're celebrating winter sports right across the road. Uh, up in Gimli, they had their uh, Gimli Ice Festival that was taking last night. It was the 100-year anniversary of the Two Long Club. And here we are today celebrating 62 years of the Ca Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. That's because everybody in this riding and across Manitoba loves the great outdoors, despite the weather that we might be getting right now with the wind. But it's still going to be a great weekend of racing. I just want to wish all the competitors all the best in their, in their race. And again, from everybody here in Selkirk here in Lake Eastman, on behalf of all my colleagues in, in Parliament, congratulations on another great uh, to championships. And thanks to everyone involved in making this such a huge success. Here, Darren. Thanks. Thanks very much, James Bazan. Now, I would like to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, the MLA of Lac de Bonnie, Mr. Wayne Owasco. Thanks. Thanks, Darren. So, on behalf of the constituents of Lac de Bonnie, and of course, the many, many hundreds and 1.3 million people in this great province of ours, congratulations to the Canadian Power de Bogan Championships Committee on their 62nd running of this great championship. Growing up in the RM of Broken Head, I've had the great pleasure of attending this event many, many, many times over my 50 plus years of being on this great earth. I'd like to thank President Jared Black, past President Reed Baker, their board, and the countless, countless volunteers who had struggled and worked together to make sure that we could pull this weekend off. The ICE crew has worked tirelessly through our past two months of spring, fall, winter, summer, fall, winter, summer again. And it's absolutely extraordinary to be holding up this weekend. So of course, we can't have these races without you, the fans, showing up. And of course, all the incredible competitors that are putting on the great show here in Bozizer. I would like to echo a couple things that Darren has mentioned in regards to the lighting system, the sound system, and absolutely everything else that, that takes the volunteers and crossing the T's and dotting the I's on many of the applications for the extra funding. I know that you're not here to listen to me, so I'm going to carry on. Thanks to everybody for showing up. Have a great rest of the Sunday finals here. Safe racing to the competitors. And thanks again to everybody for attending. Thanks very much to MLA of Lac de Bonnie, Wayne Owasco. Well, now I would like to introduce the guy that I met, one of the first guys, in fact, that I met when I came to announcing in Beauxjeux many years ago. Fantastic guy and the mayor of Beauxjeux, Mr. Ray Sherrill. Good afternoon, race fans, and welcome to 62 years of the best racing you can ever get in the world right here in Beauxjeux. 
I want to thank, first of all, all of the Board of Directors for all their hard work. I know this year has been a really challenging year here with all the getting the lighting finished and all the weather not working and cooperating this year and rebuilding this track multiple times. And it's all from the hard work of all these volunteers. Not only the Board of Directors, but there's hundreds of people here that are working year-round to make this facility the number one in North America, and it's something very important to be proud of. I also want to thank you all, the spectators, the sponsors, and a big thank you to all the racers, because if it wasn't for all of us working together, we wouldn't have this show that is number one in the world. You know, we're sitting there yesterday talking about Facebook and social media, and we're being recognized right around the world as the number one facility out there when it comes to snowmobile racing. And I want to thank you all for being part of that. So on behalf of the town of Bossier, I want to thank you for coming out this weekend, and hopefully today we finish off wonderful, and have a great day, and see you here next year. Thanks very much, Ray. And now it is time to meet the Reeve of the RM of Brokenhead, Brad Saluk. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. The good thing about speaking last is there's pretty much nothing left to say because everybody said it already. But on behalf of the municipality of Brokenhead, my council and the residents, I would like to welcome you all here to the races, to the 62nd annual CPT championship at the Co-op Com Co Comedy Complex. I'm having a hard time speaking today. But on behalf of the municipality, I'd like to thank the Board of Directors and the many volunteers. Like Ray has said, we had lots of different issues here. We had lots of different seasons, spring, fall, winter, spring, in one month. And these volunteers did an uh, exceptional job keeping this track together so that the racers could be here this weekend. On behalf of the municipality, on behalf of the municipality I'd like to Congratulate all the racers for coming here to this weekend. Wish you a successful, safe weekend. Thank you. Thanks very much, Brad. You're fantastic. That's awesome. All right. And finally, one more dignitary to announce. Of course, Reed Baker, the past president of the Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Now we have a new president leading us into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Jared Black. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming out to the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. This past year around CPTC has been quite a memorable experience. Um, we've had the $536,000 lighting project, and I would like to thank the province of Manitoba, the town of Bozicher, and the RM of Brokenhead for their incredible support for this project. It's going to grow this facility into the next realm of uh, events that we can have here. Um, I'd also like to thank some incredible volunteers that helped and donated a pile of time to complete this project. Mr. Dave Wojcik, Kyle Wojcik, Curtis Rexeeler, Kevin Stubel, and all of our directors and volunteers that helped dedicate their time to complete this project this past year. Um, for the 2023-2024 race season, CPTC has again been part of the USSA Pro Star Cup circuit and we have the honor of being the first and last race of the year. They put on quite a show last night, and congrats to Gunnar Stern for winning that event. Uh, CPTC continues to grow in size each and every year with new sponsors. Uh, we, we appreciate the uh, ability they see to the vision we have in this facility and for the events that can be held here, not only our own, but other events that are held here throughout the year. Lastly, I want to thank you guys, the fans. The weather today is suboptimal, but you guys are hardy Manitobans and came out to support us. So thank you guys for coming out, and let's have a great day. Well, thanks very much, Jared Black, new president of the CPTC. And how about, ladies and gentlemen, a great big hand for all of these awesome vintage sleds at our Manitoba Mini Sled Racers Association. There's a lot of effort and time put in here. How about a great big hand for them? All right, and we have one more important thing to do before we start this 60-second Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. I am now going to call upon Thomas Goot to sing the anthems. Thomas, are you here? Awesome, there's Thomas. Please stand for the singing of the anthems. Oh. 
Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare and the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave oh canada our home and native land true patriot love in all of us command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide o oh, canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free oh canada we stand on guard for thee oh canada we stand on guard for Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. Back straightaway, other side of the big half mile here at Co-op Community Complex. They are the future stars of snowmobile racing off to our left here in the grandstands and looking forward to seeing some of their racing throughout the day. You can get on over and visit them 
And we're getting set to go with the rest of our day here at the FXR 62nd Canadian Powered Toboggan Championships. It's going to be a great day for motorsports here in Beauzeur. All right. All right, getting ready to go with race number 11. Of course, we did 10 races before our opening ceremonies. Now we'll go to race 11, Pro Champ 440. This is our Canadian Power Toboggan Championships class, and it'll be the first time we will see it today. Of course, yesterday, Gunnar Stern G Money out of West Chicago, Illinois, picking up the USSA Pro Star Cup finale here. And we're going to do some point checking here on the website to see how the points ended up, but I do believe he will also be the 2024 USSA Pro Star Cup champion after winning the feature here. We are going to round, or rather race 11 Pro Champ 440, round one, heat one for five laps coming up momentarily. They are in staging. Looking like Calvin Cook will be in the lineup, the number 75, sponsored by Polaris, FXR, and Wall Brothers. Former go-kart racers is the whole family and out of Dayton, Minnesota, the 75 Calvin Cook. Just over 20 years old now. He'll be looking forward to a good finish. Of course, the 24 Jordan Sobetsky will be in race number 11 out of Beauzeur, Manitoba. Sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises and had a great, great run yesterday in the last chance qualifier making the main event, did Jordan Sobetsky. Crashing out in that last chance qualifier, getting back on the sled and winning the LCQ, Jordan Sobetsky. Another young rider, just over 20 years old, out of Beauzeur, started at that Manitoba Mini Sled Racers Association at four years of age. So he's been racing over 15 years. 2021 Pro Formula 500 champion is Jordan Sobetsky. Loves to ride dirt bikes and race go-karts in the summer. Sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises, DC Accounting and Edge Equipment, along with Sun and Snow and Oak Bank Auto Body along with Auto Stripe. 39X is Justin Peterson out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin. Looking forward to seeing the 39 run here. Of course, the strong runner on that 39X. Sponsored by Stud Boy, Lot Off Septic Services and Meyer Yamaha. The five is Danique Lambert, who will be competing in this one, we are told, on the lineup sheets. We also have the 5,900 Johnson out of Drayton, right now scheduled to start on a 2017 Johnson Racing chassis. 233, Matt Bennett of New London. The one is Griffin Leepak out of Hartford. The 26, Quinn Whitechuck out of Beauzeur. Looking forward to seeing Whitechuck run here, local Rider in race number 11 scheduled to go. Quinn Whitechuck on a Hool chassis out of Beauzeur. Former F500 and Sportsman 600 rider and sponsored by Funks Toyota, LeBrokery Lumber and DNR Strecker Farms. Also Sabrina Blanchett of course will be in race number 11. Supergirl and Supergirl all the way from Drummondville, Quebec. Does a real good job here in her first visit so far to the big half mile oval here in Beauzeur. Sabrina Blanchett has run for 21 years. First time ever in Beauzeur. First female to ever make the front row at Eagle River World Championships. Also the first female ever to win a Pro Champ 440 final in Woodstock. Been the winner at all IFS races at Eagle River. Two-time winner at Adirondack and also races dirt track, lightning sprints and midgets a three-time speedster champion. So look for the 79 of Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec in race number 11 as we get set to go. Now attention in the pit area. Race 12 will be another pro champ heat race as will race 13. Race 14 will be the third race of the weekend, but the first of the day 
for the Jerry Bunky Memorial Cup. That is the IFS 440X class for race number 14. Then race 15, Sportsman 600s. Race 16, Outlaw 600s. So those are our next handful of races. If you are in those classes, you will need to be in staging and ready to go as we get ready for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR here at the Co-op Community Complex. Don't forget to visit the Cobra Pit area throughout the day. Some awesome machinery in the pit area to view. You can walk down and visit with your favorite riders. Check out the cool sleds down there and all that's going on. Our beer garden is open. That is now known as the Moose Den. Get yourself a nice cold twisted tea or moose head. Also, our concession area is fantastic. If you're hungry, looking for a hot beverage or hot food, our concession area underneath the grandstands is absolutely awesome as we get set to go. So I'll run through the lineup for you again real quick. We've talked about all these riders in race number 11 coming up. The 75 is Calvin Cook, the 24 Jordan Sobetsky. Riding the 39X out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin is going to be Justin Peterson. The 3 is Danique Lambert out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec. The 59, Hunter Johnson from Drayton, North Dakota. New London, Wisconsin's Matt Bennett will be on the 233. The 1 is Griffin Leepak out of Hartford, Wisconsin. Riding the 26 out of Beausager is Quinn Whitechuck. And the 79 is Sabrina Blanchett. Supergirl out of... Drummondville, Quebec. Race 11 coming up here. All part of the FXR 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. This ought to be a good one. Twenty-six of Quinn Whitechuck on the outside, the Beaujolais rider on the bright yellow twenty-six, and we're getting set to go racing. Here we go! Looks like a great start for the seventy-nine and the thirty-nine in this one. Thirty-nine X Justin Peterson and the seventy-nine of Sabrina Blanchett certainly first off the line. Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl in the number one spot. Great racing action in turn three and four here. Danique Lambert on the number three is right there. Calvin Cook fourth on the 75. Look at this race for the first, second, and third spot now. The 39X of Justin Peterson inside of the 79. This is a race for all ages. Fifth spot is the number one. That is Griffin Leepak. Your top five are tearing it up here in race number 11. Your Pro Champ 440s are under power. White flag being displayed, half a lap to go. Look at this race into turn three and four now. Supergirl in the lead as they come out of turn number four. Justin Peterson will finish behind your winner, Sabrina Blanchett. What a great run by Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec on the number 79. Sponsored by Samson Racing, Giffers Racing, Choco Design, Kilometers Plus, RM Stater, and Deco Racing. 21 years of experience for Sabrina Blanchett, and she gets the job done. Wow. That was a good one. We'll be back with your lineup momentarily for race 12 in Pro Champs.
Here is that lineup now for race 12, Pro Champ 440 for FXR. Round one, heat two, five laps will be the distance. And riding out of Lockport, Manitoba on the 2020 Skidoo, the number eight is Travis McDonald. The 55 comes to us from West Pine Ridge. On a wall chassis, the 55 is Brett Keelback. Riding the 102, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing and FXR. The rider is out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. Multi-time champion Blaine Stevenson is on the 102. Also a multi-time champion and current world champion from Eagle River in the F3 class. Out of New Germany, Minnesota, on a skidoo, the 28 is Matt Gady. And another champion in this one out of West Chicago, Illinois, riding the Red Bull skidoo. This is G-Money, Gunnar Stern on the 220. The 31 is Will Garceau out of Wisconsin. The 21, Tyler Obi from Bozizier. The 54 is Calvin Peterson from Eden, Wisconsin. And the 39, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing, is Tom Olson out of Greenbush. Wall Brothers Racing FXR entry getting set to go. All right, the 54 pulls up to the outside now of row number one. That is Calvin Peterson. Here we go, the 220. Gunner Stern with the whole shot. Wow, did he get off the line fast after winning the USSA Pro Star Cup feature here Last night in Bozizier, continuing to be real quick. Lane Stevenson, Travis McDonald in the top three. Travis McDonald certainly knows his way around this big fast half mile oval in Bozizier. And is on the gas here early in this one. Travis McDonald, also another former go-kart racer. Sponsored by Skidoo, Surf Pro, FXR, and Bennett's Marine, along with Ryback's Custom Machine. Stern on a mission. McDonald challenging the 102 of Blaine Stevenson. And the eight gets a good run into turn number two, but cannot make the pass. Stevenson maintaining the second spot while Gunnar Stern in a great big hurry taking the white flag. McDonald passes the 102. Who is way outside Gady now, right up there into the third spot. Troubles for the 102. The Red Bull Skidoo, the number 220 will take the win. Travis McDonald and Gady in the top three, then Tom Olson, then the 55. That is Brett Keelback out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba on a wall chassis rounding out the top five. Well, Blaine Stevenson on the 102, having obvious mechanical problems and heading back to the pit area. Blaine Stevenson out of St. Cloud, Minnesota, a tough break for him here early in the day. And race number 13 on its way. Pro Champ 440s, round one heat three for five laps. 16 is gonna be DJ Saluk out of Bozizier. The 111 is Tanner Foss from Middle River. Riding the 87, this is Madison Phillips out of Drayton, North Dakota on a 2020 Johnson Racing chassis. Out of Fargo, North Dakota, riding the number five is Ross Olson. The 916 is Harrison Lefevre out of Hibbing, Minnesota. 
Harrison is on a wall chassis and on a 2022 Skidoo. The six is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City, Minnesota. The 15 is Hunter Shears from St. Francis, Minnesota. And the 48 is Philippe Roy Lalonde out of St. Jude, Quebec. Scratch the 35 of Dylan Barron out of Anola. Dylan Barron is a scratch in race 13 on the number 35. Here we go. Gavin Peterson on the six looking strong, but look at this four wide down the back straightaway. Wow. These riders are something else. Philippe Roy Lalonde on the 48 leads it with the 111 of Tanner Foss in the second spot. We've got ourselves a race here. Fifteen of Hunter Sears doing a good job. Currently third. Ross Olson fourth. On the number five, Ross Olson is out of Fargo, North Dakota. Red flag, we see a red flag on the track. Looks like turn three is where the incident is. Almost in turn four, about the middle. We will try to get your report just as soon as we can from that corner. Trying to get a shot over there to see what the situation is in turn three and four. I did not see that as our riders head back over to turn number two towards the staging area. And again, we'll get you an update just as soon as we can. We have some of the best medical staff around, so we will make sure we assess the situation, take a have a look over there and see what the situation just might, might be. Criticare EMS just heading over to the scene over in turn three and four. And again, we will update you just as soon as we have word on the radio. We are working in race number 13, Pro Champ 440, round one, heat number three. I want to thank some of our sponsors while we have a moment. FXR, Beaver Truck Center, Beaujolais Co-op. Beaujolais GM, Cobra Enterprises, Travel Manitoba, Moosehead, Twisted T, Access Credit Union, Beaujolais Home Hardware, Oak Bank Hearing Center, the RM of Brokenhead, and the town of Beaujolais. I'd like to thank all of our dignitaries also that were with us today, the MP of Selkirk Interlake, James Bazan, the MLA of Lac de Bonnie, Wayne Owasco, also had the mayor of Bozeger with us, Mr. Ray Sherl, the Reeve of the RM of Brokenhead, Brad Saluk, and our new president at CPTC, Jared Black. I'd also like to thank once again our national anthem singer, Thomas Goot. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the Jerry Bunky Memorial Challenge will certainly continue throughout the weekend. We have a couple of races done yesterday. Last year's champion was Joe Presta, three and four today. Race three and four will happen. It's an overall weekend point series in the Jerry Bunky Cup. So race three and four will occur today. 
And that overall point series will be decided by the end of the day for the Jerry Bunky Cup. Sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises, Rantec Industrial Limited, Sport Parts Incorporated, PJ Materic Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Hildebrand Sod Farm, and Baxter Ranch. And again, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes after we get an update from turn number two. TV on the internet we have a presentation with Dustin Wall and Brett Richter talking about traction now for those of you that are live with us here cooldown.tv live stream is available in the beer garden in the moose den so if you want to watch that we are going to take a little bit of time here to evaluate in turn number three so you want to get on over to the moose den if you want to watch this interview with Dustin Wall and Brett Richter regarding traction on snowmobiles going to be pretty cool over at the Moose Den. Do check it out. Hi, it's Brett Richter. I'm up here at the CPTC in Beausjour, Manitoba. And one of the goals in this production work is that we're trying to bring the sport of champ racing to the public and help them understand things a little bit. Uh, traction is something that most people don't understand because the sport lives and dies on an ice surface. And most snowmobiles simply don't run on ice very well. Yet when you see these sleds at more than 100 miles per hour, there's obviously something to that. With me today is Dustin Wall, uh, part of the Wall Brothers Racing uh, family, and also a former champ racer. Mm -hmm. uh, get many victories under your belt as well, right? Everywhere but here in Beausjour on Sunday. <laughs> wow, well there we go. So that, that puts Beausjour in its place, I guess. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, I've known Dustin for a lot of years, so when we were talking about trying to help you understand the sport better, 
I called him and said, let's talk about traction one day. And uh, Dustin, is, he loves the camera. So he was like right on it right away and mm -hmm. said, I'd be happy to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> so what we've got is a section of track that Dustin brought up from the shop. Mm -hmm. um, if you can see on the track, there's many of these studs, correct? Mm -hmm. But in many different shapes and lengths. Tell us about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, so, so the basic, uh, basically what you're trying to do is get the best stud pattern and try to get as many scratch lines as possible. The goal is to have as many different areas of the ice covered. Um, so that's why the studs are all in different shapes and, or not shapes, but in different locations on the track. Um, today it was really warm, so it was over 40, 40 degrees Fahrenheit, so that takes a little bit different studding. Um, like these here um, are called chisel studs. They're like a flat face, helps grab the ice a little bit better when it's, um, the ice is softer. Um, but typically, uh, Woody's makes, like these are all Woody studs in here, um, and they're just typical um, studs. There's a length that they have to be, you can't just use any length. Um, so each, each track, there's two different ones you can run. There's a 106 length track, which takes a shorter stud, and then a 116 length track, which allows a longer stud because the track lug height is different. So, and it just depends on, there's no, I don't know which one's faster or not, that's yet to be proven, but. Sure, so mm -hmm. if this was underneath the sled, which side of this track is driver's right to which is driver's left? Uh, so, this is the uh, inside of the track here, and this is on the outside. Now. This is just a, a, you know, part of a track that, that we had and uh, we brought it in so everyone can see. Uh, the faster sleds, as in the, the Pro Champ class, require more traction than, like, say, the Formula 500 class. Also, there's different rules. Um, the Pro Champ class, you can weld plates onto the uh, bars here on the track clips and they give a lot more traction, especially on the starting line to, to, so you don't spin and you can get going faster. The Formula 500s can't do it, you gotta leave it stock, you can just have the, just have the bigger studs, so. About how many studs will run in a champ track? Uh, so the, the 106 track is 42 bars and there is um, roughly about eight studs per bar, so what's that? 120. Yep. 340, somewhere in that ballpark? Yeah, yep. So. Okay, so if a driver tells you that their sled is loose, mm -hmm. what exactly does that mean from a stud perspective? Uh, basically, need to either, to get more of the studs into the, into the track. Um, obviously, there's many different things you can do to change that um, with the suspension and, and whatnot, but so if the sled is loose, you need to get more of these uh, picks into the into the ice so that you can get keep the momentum through the corner and off the corner. So when drivers talk about um, you know inevitably hitting dirt in a racetrack and they talk about losing control or losing traction, mm -hmm. um, is that an impact then where these are getting dull and not having a grip force or what exactly are they referencing? Uh, normally, when they're talking about that. Uh, would be the the front end they're losing the the carbides on the front under the skis are like razors they're eight and ten inches long in the pro champ class um, but the when when you hit the dirt it takes that edge off and they can't turn a lot of times though it will take the studs out of the if say if there's a rock in the track because these are just made of steel Okay. Um, so if you hit a rock or something, it's going to bend it over and that's going to affect that area of the track and it's not going to dig in. It, it's very critical, especially like when it's cold out, that they are as sharp as possible to, to get the most grip on the, on the ice. So based on what you're saying, I would assume there's somebody usually in each trailer for a, a champ class that has a responsibility to check the studs after every round? Mm -hmm. Do yeah. they sharpen? Do they replace? What do they do? Um, it, it just depends on, uh, some sharpen, there are sharpeners available, um, and, uh, but a lot of times they'll just, you know, replace them. It, it's, it's really critical if you're looking for the most traction, the studs are the right length and there is, you know, you want to keep right at that maximum rule. It, you know, certain, certain situations when the sled is maybe too hooked up, you're not so concerned about it, but a lot of times you, you want as, want them to be as long as possible. 
and how do they, how do you know if your studs are too long? What's the, what's, what's happening in there? Well, there's a gauge that, that you can buy from Woody's that will go on top of the, the um, track lug and it'll, it'll basically just show the height you know, to make sure that they pass that, you know. And that's something that tech inspection does at the end of the race? Yes, so if you're fortunate enough to go to tech at the end of the race, that's pretty much every time they're gonna check that because it's, it's, it's that important that these are the, the right length. Just out of curiosity, I mean, we all know the sport's not cheap, but if you put 350 studs in a track, these can't be a dollar a piece, right? No, they're they're pretty expensive, especially nowadays. They're you know pretty expensive, so it's it's best to to try save on your equipment as much as possible. So you know uh, you you buy a track, you you know put the clips on it and stud it. You're looking at you probably a few thousand dollars in the in the pro champ class. So it's it's definitely important to to take care of your stuff, and they're not gonna. Typically, they're not going to go bad unless you run over dirt or rocks or something, or you know, hit your tunnel or some some something like that. Sure. One final question for you because I know it's something people ask often. When they come up to the starting line, you'll see the drivers jumping up and down on the back of their machine, mm -hmm. and most people, I don't know if they think it's exercise or what exactly they think is going on, but um, with this piece in our hands, explain exactly what's going on there. So so basically. You're pulling up to the starting line, and the sled is sitting on top of the ice because the, the picks don't go in far enough. What you're trying to do is you're trying to jump on the, the sled and drive them down just like you would, say, a hammer and a nail. Just drive them into the ice and get them into the ice as, as deep as possible so when they hit the throttle and they, they can get the best launch out of the, out of the gate as, as possible. So if we, were, if we were watching the start of a race and we saw a long rooster tail coming out from a sled at the starting line, the assumption then is that the picks weren't set? Correct. And they just spun right off yep. the line? Yep. Uh, most of the time when that happens, they, <clears throat> well, when it's really warm out, it's, it's really a problem because getting hold of that warm ice, it's soft and it just breaks apart. It, you know, the, a lot of the sleds will just sit there and they'll just spin and you'll just see a rooster tail coming out, you know. But um, a little, a lot of the times, you know, just putting some chisels in or, or that will, will help grab it and get, get you going to the first corner. And obviously from a safety standpoint, these things are dangerous. So I know that the, um, the Pro Champ class, along with many of the other classes, includes something called a tunnel enclosure, right? Mm -hmm. um, talk just briefly about that before we wrap this up. Yeah, so, so basically the, you know, it's like two and a half inches, the distance that it can be from the, from the tip of this stud to the aluminum that encloses the back of the tunnel. And basically it's, the goal is to not get somebody sucked up into the, into the track, you know. Right. It's fortunately, you know, I raced many years and never ever had any issues, but unfortunately have friends that were, were had, had issues, you know, with this. And, you know, you get all these studs clawing away at, at you, it's, it's not good. So no. as, as, as safe as we can be around these, it's, it's the best thing yeah. to do. Awesome. Well, thanks for your time. Thanks for yeah. your knowledge. Um, mm -hmm. you know, Wall Brothers is a great resource for people that are looking for information on studding tracks and, and purchasing the right, the right equipment. Uh, we thank Woody's too as one of the sponsors for the Pro Star Cup Tour for bringing their traction products to the market and helping us out. Uh, we'll bring you more tech tips here as the weekend moves on. Race fans and all of you out at Cooldown.tv, we have a quick update. The driver is stable and in the Critic Care EMS ambulance right now being evaluated. But good news, DJ Saluk is stable. We are going to have a bit of a delay, though, while we wait for another ambulance to transfer. So another ambulance is definitely on its way. We have radio contact, and the ambulance is on its way. But we invite you to take a little break, get on over to the moose den, over to the concession area, get yourself something hot to eat or cold to drink, and we'll give you a few minutes warning to get back to the grandstands and, of course, on the live stream when we resume racing.
Just a reminder, everyone, there are just under two hours left to vote at cptcracing.com. That is, of course, for the Rider of the Weekend in the Pro Champ class. Just under two hours remaining. Get on to cptcracing.com and vote for your favorite Pro Champ racer. All right, just moments away now from the return of race 13 Pro Champ 440s. That's what we were working on here in Beausager, all part of the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. And we'll try to provide an update on DJ Saluk as he is being transferred right now between Criticare EMS vehicles. However, driver was stable, we are told, so that is very good news. All right, so we will restart this race. We'll find out how many laps are remaining here momentarily. This is race 13, your Pro Champ 440s, round one, heat three. Next up will be round three of the Jerry Bunky Memorial Cup. So if you're in that race, you'll need to be in staging, followed by the Sportsman 600s for race 15. All right, there is the number 48 to the line. That is Philippe Roy Lalonde. The 111 is Tanner Foss for Middle River. 15, Hunter Sears is there. There's the five of Ross Olson out of Fargo. The number six, Gavin Peterson joining the party. Looks like the 916 of Harrison Lefebvre out of Hibbing as well. And the 87 of Madison Phillips. And we're going once again. Race 13, Pro Champ 440, round one, heat number three. Three wide momentarily, and now two wide down the back chute into turn number three and four. Forty-eight fifteen and the one one one. Philippe Roy Lalonde. 
the 15 of Sears and the 111 Tanner Foss in the top three. 95 miles per hour on the previous lap. White flag is out, one to go. Ross Olson is out of Fargo, North Dakota, currently fourth on the number five. Forty-eight, fifteen, and one, one, one. Followed by the five and the six in the top five. The number six finishing fifth, of course, is Gavin Peterson out of Chicago City. So that'll do it for Pro Champ four forty round one heat three. All right, kids, don't forget, at our next grooming break, you can get over to the Access Credit Union Family Fun Zone, and you can take a ride around the track in the transit van. So all kids, at the next grooming break, just get on over to that Family Fun Zone before the grooming break, and you can take a ride around the track during grooming. It's pretty cool. Do take that in. All right, so we are on race number 14 now, IFS 440X, Jerry Bunky Cup Racing coming your way. Race three of four on the weekend. This is an overall point series. It is sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises Limited, PJ Materic Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Rantec Industrial Limited, Sport Parts Incorporated, Hildebrand Sod Farm, and Baxter Ranch. Couple of scratches. Joe Koch out of Detroit Lakes on the 64 is out and the 61 Tom Olson is out. Sabrina Blanchett is on the 79. The 12 is Jamie Grenier. The 80 Joe Press, the last year's champion. And the seven is Ryan Gibson. And Sabrina Blanchett wastes no time. Supergirl, oh, oh, a bit of a bobble it looks like. And on by goes the rest of the field, wow. Did that happen quick? I was just watching on cooldown.tv up here in the tower and that happened quick. I had to take a quick look on the racetrack there and see if that actually transpired. Joel Presta is your current leader. He is out of Ladywood, Manitoba and the reigning champion. 97 miles an hour, these sleds are moving, wow. Gibson in second spot, the 79 of Blanchette is third. Your leader, all by his lonesome, just flying out there. Good look at number 80 of Joe Presta. Blanchette trying to close up on the number seven of Ryan Gibson. Twelve is Jamie Grenier out of Swan Lake. This one's scheduled for five laps. White flag is out. The third of four points races on the weekend. Race four will occur later on today, and they take the overall points from the four races to determine the winner of the Jerry Bunky Memorial Cup. Last year's champion doing a great job here in race number three as the checkered flag is being displayed on the front chute. And that'll do it for the number 80. Second to Gibson, third, Sabrina Blanchette, Supergirl out of Drummondville, Quebec. And rounding out the field will be the skidoo of Jamie Grenier out of Swan Lake. That'll do it now for race 14, IFS 440X Jerry Bunky Memorial Cup action. Race 15 coming your way momentarily.
All right, three scratches coming up for race 15 in Sportsman 600. Round two for five laps. Kyle Omachinski on the number 15 is out. The three of Scott Wagner is out, as is the 16 of DJ Saluk. So who's in while the 779 Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan on a 2000 Polaris is in. The 179 Jason Mackey will start. Jason is out of Lanigan, Saskatchewan. The 44X is Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. The 13 is John Hall from Bozizer. And rounding out the field is Brad Artimowicz out of Dryden, Ontario on a 2000 Polaris. Brad Artimowicz on the 08 in race number 15. And here we go racing. Good start for the number 13. That is John Hall out of Bozizer on the 96 Skidoo. That 13 flying down the back straightaway into turn three and four. Good racing for first, second, third, and fourth so far here in race 15, your Sportsman 600 class. There's the 44X and the 7779 rather. 89 miles per hour, we're told, from turn number one from the radar staff. Forty four X, your new leader. Great job by Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. That rider has been pretty good all weekend and showing the way here now in race fifteen in the Sportsman six hundred class for FXR, our corporate sponsor here this weekend. Many thanks going out to that very successful and very local Manitoba company. Seven seventy nine is second, that is Colton Kreitzer. 13, John Hall out of Bozizer. There's the 08, that is Brad Artimowicz out of Dryden in the fourth spot unofficially. Oh, we've got a crash in turn number two, it looks like. I do believe that is the 13, is that John Hall? I think it is. That is the 13 of John Hall out of Bozizer. All right, so it looks like the 13 is okay over in turn number two. John is looking to restart that sled apparently, so we'll see if he can continue or if he's going to turn right towards the pit area. Apparently he simply fell off his sled is what we're told by our radio staff here, so I think the 13 is going to take another shot at this. John Hall out of Bozizer on the 1996 Skidoo. Tough break, but looking like he's going to continue. Next up, we'll have race 16. We'll go back to the Outlaw 600s. Then we'll have race 17 and 18, and then a Cubex intermission break. Total of 46 races scheduled here today. We are working in race 15, so about a third through the day here, all part of the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships, brought to you by FXR. There's the 44X of Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh. The 779 Colton Kreitzer to the line. 08, Brad Artimowicz and, well there is John Hall now rolling up as well. Also the 179, Jason Mackey out of Lanigan, Saskatchewan. So a total of five to restart race 15 here. Good start's going to be important. See what the 13 of John Hall can do. 
John Hall starting fifth as a result of that crash. Self-inflicted crash, in fact. 779 is the leader. 44, Randy Oliver is second. 13 is third, that is John Hall. So Hall already back up to third. White flag is out. John Hall challenging the 44X of Randy Oliver. That is a great race for second and third. 90 miles per hour on the previous circuit. That's pretty quick. Sportsman 600s moving along nicely. Take a look over now in turn number three and four. Ooh, the 13 tries to go inside. Doesn't make it stick. The 779 will win a Colton Kreitzer, and that's close at the line, but it looked like Randy Oliver, then the 13 of John Hall. That is unofficial. If that changes, we'll let you know, but 44X just edged out the 13 after. John Hall did a great job in three and four, almost passing the 44X, but couldn't quite make it stick. But nonetheless, a great finish there in that race 15, your Sportsman 600 class. Running start for the Outlaw 600s. The 19 is Chris Plasky. The 18, Area Plasky. 71N is Donnie Neubauer. The 3XL is Shorty Curran. The 1 is Joe Snyder. Keep your eyes on that points leader. The 36 is Tom Stoltman. Driving the 44W is David Webster. And the 4 is Ron Teroff. Ron Teroff out of Lisbon, Iowa. Joe Schneider in the one, in a great big hurry. Eighteen is in the number one spot. That's Aria Plasky out of Saint Germain, Wisconsin. Here comes the one of Joe Schneider now. Ron Teroff is in the four with the four stroke. Good contingent of Outlaw 600s. If you want to learn more about these, you could go to outlaw600.com. Pretty cool class. Seat belts, roll cages, I like it already. 86 miles per hour, that's pretty quick. Under green here, Joe Schneider showing the way. Good racing for third, fourth, and fifth. The number four is Ron Teroff out of Lisbon, Iowa. What a great name for a racer, Teroff. <laughs> White flag being displayed. Joe Schneider well in command. The 18, Area Plasky is second, tear off. Then the 71 and the 19. The 71 is driven by Donnie Neubauer. The 19 by Chris Plasky out of St. Germain, Wisconsin. Winner, Joe Schneider. Number four, Teroff, then Plasky, and then another Plasky. The 19 is Chris Plasky. Followed by the 36 of Tom Stoltman out of St. Germain, Wisconsin. And finally, the three, XL Shorty Curran, and the 44. That is David Webster out of Monroe, Wisconsin. 2018 Articat powered Outlaw 600. So that will do it for race 16, Outlaw 600, round two for five laps. Next, race number 17.
Pro Mod 340 Liquid, Super Mod 340 Liquid Combo Final for four laps. Justin Habing is on the 165. The 44 is Vic Mazur out of West St. Paul on a 1973 Polaris. The 38 is Lee Baxter from Mayor Thorpe, Alberta. The 79, Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl out of Drummondville. And the 65, keep your eyes on this rider, Norm Chura, out of Enola. Pro Mod 340 Liquid and Super Mod 340 Liquid combo final. Race number 17 on your schedule. Once again, we'd like to say a great big hello to all of you in internet land, tuned into cooldown.tv. Our broadcast crew doing a great job here today. We have lost a couple of cameras due to the incredibly high winds here. It is crazy in Beaujolais in terms of wind. And there goes the 79 of Sabrina Blanchett. 44, Vic Mazur in the second spot, but battling here as they head on down the back straightaway. Chura out of Anola into the second spot on the number 65. Seventy-nine miles per hour on the previous lap for your race leader, Sabrina Blanchett, out of Drummondville, Quebec. Races lightning sprints and midgets in the summer months, and does a great job on the sled, as you can see. Number seventy-nine leading the way. Chura followed by the forty-four of Mazer. The one-six-five is fourth. That is Justin Habing out of Dugald, Manitoba. The 165 is a 1973 Polaris in the fourth spot. One to go for the 79. Chura holding off Mazer for the second spot currently. As Supergirl Sabrina Blanchett into turn three and four. Completely uncontested in this particular race and checkers are coming out for Supergirl Sabrina Blanchett. Second spot Chura, third is Mazer and fourth will be the 165 of Justin Habing. Out of Dougald, Manitoba. All right, race 18 on deck. Superstock, 250, 300, 340 fan combo. This is a final, and this one is scheduled for five laps. Riding the number 14 out of Jansen, Saskatchewan. This is a 1981 Yamaha. The rider is Jared Koopman. The number 15 is Sheldon Carlson out of Mackinac, North Dakota, riding a 1976 Mercury. On a 76 Yamaha, the 977 is Sean Dale out of Plunkett, Saskatchewan. The 94 is Brian Kep from Rosewood. And rounding out the field, the 99 is Ed Lurkey out of Hallock on a 1977 Polaris. So that is your lineup for Superstock 250, 300, 340 fan combo final for five laps. Following this, we will go to a Cubex intermission break. We want to invite all the kids over to the Access Credit Union Family Fun Zone. You can board a bus there and take a ride around the track while they're grooming. And here we go. Looks like the number 15, Sheldon Carlson out of Mackinac. 76 Mercury working real well off the starting line.
This one's scheduled for just five laps, and it is a final. Ninety-nine in the second spot is Ed Lurkey from Hallock, Minnesota, just across the border. Fourteen, Jared Koopman is out of Janssen, Saskatchewan, on an eighty-one Yamaha. The fourteen currently running in the third spot. Fifteen holding on to the lead. Lurkey on the Polaris. In the second spot still. 65 miles per hour, we're told, on the last lap. Anthony got it dead on there. Anthony from Cooldown.tv, he said probably about 65. You meant kilometers, though. You weren't right. This is miles per hour. <laughs> White flag is out for the number 15 out of North Dakota. Jared Koopman holding on to the third spot. Checkered flag is going to wave this time around. Not much question about this one. Great job by the 15 of Sheldon Carlson. He'll win it, the number 15 Sheldon Carlson out of Mackinac, North Dakota. Followed by the 99 and the 14. So Ed Lurkey will take second. The 14, Jared Koopman third out of Johnson, Saskatchewan. As the breeze continues to blow here in Beauzeger, we are now going to take a short break for Quebec grooming. We invite you over to the concession area, get yourself something hot to eat or hot to drink. Also, our moose den is open. Check out our full line of CPTC promo wear. As well, kids, get over to the Access Credit Union Family Fun Zone immediately. Board the bus and you can take a lap around the track.
At Co-op, we do things a little differently. Because we're not owned by big wigs in far away places. We're owned by our members, ordinary people supporting local business. We provide local jobs, support local producers, and give back to local causes in our community. It's just part of what makes us a different kind of business. And we think that's pretty cool. Co-op, you're at home here. We've got guys from automotive, we've got guys from heavy duty. Everybody helps everybody. Every day I get to come into something different, so it's always fun and exciting. You'll do everything from a PDI up to a full engine rebuild. It's hard work, but it's good work. Are you looking for a great place to work? Hi, Brett Richter back here at the CPTC up in Beausjour, Manitoba. It's race weekend, we're pretty excited. It's the last official event for the drivers for this winter, and it's been a very unusual season for all of us. Uh, very happy to have Madison Phillips with us today. She's a driver of the number 87 Polaris in the Pro Champ 440 division. She is literally in a division where very few women go. So congratulations in entering that, that field of drivers and uh, going after it every week. Thank you. Yeah, it's a big field, isn't it? It is. It's very competitive, too. What's the desire to run champ? Um, I like the challenge. I like to, um, it's also nice to be one of very few women. Um, so it's nice to kind of, I've always liked to prove people wrong. Everybody mm -hmm. kind of thinks women can't do it or women aren't as great. So I'm trying to um, prove people wrong with that. Yeah, uh, you're doing a great job because I know there's not a lot of them out there. And, um, you're certainly willing to be there and be on the line and line up to the best of the best and give it your best shot. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just, that's incredible. 
Uh, you and I had a chance to chat in Beaux-Azur here not too long ago. Unfortunately, you had an off on the front stretch, mm -hmm. and uh, you weren't feeling the best after that, but thankfully you're okay. Yeah. Um, tell people out there, just so they have some idea, how difficult it is to really handle a champ sled. Yeah, I mean, they're really, um, you go, you're going 100 miles an hour. Things happen a lot faster at 100 miles an hour. Um, so whenever I, I crashed there, um, I went to wipe my shield, and... Um, caught a rut and then it took over. <laughs> right. It's actually a very common problem for, for people when they're racing is to try and try and handle their visibility. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes you see drivers taking their brake hand off and you know trying to adjust the shield and it's not that easy. No. It's, no. it's, it's definitely a challenging thing. I have trouble with that. I mean I ever since then I've been scared to even wipe my shield so mm -hmm. Working on getting my confidence back with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's understandable. I, you know, accidents like that uh, don't come often, but when they do, you seem to learn and remember them and mm -hmm. go on from there. Um, so when you go out for a heat race and you come back and you want some adjustments made, who's the person you're talking to about that? My stepdad, Scott, for sure. Yeah, and is he, how is he, is he receptive to those kind of things? Does he understand what you're looking for? Um, yep. Yeah, him and I have a good communication system. Um, if I don't fully know um, he's listening to on the uh, sidelines, so usually he can kind of know, but um, I tell him, I think that our communication is pretty good, and he knows what I mean whenever something's wrong. Are you more of a handling person or a horsepower person? What do you want? Um, I think I like the handling more. You want to be confident on the machine when it's going in the corner? Yeah. Yeah, yeah interesting. Um, when you go to line up heat final, whatever it happens to be, and you see some of the, some of the, premier guys next to you. What's in your brain? Um, I mean, I'm still getting used to um, being on my champ sled, so I'm just trying to stay with them. Mm -hmm. My goal is to try and be um, closer and closer each time and then eventually um, competing with them and maybe beating them. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. It would be great. <laughs> <laughs> You've got potential. I know it's there. It's just a matter of putting two and two together and, yeah. and making it all hit at the same time. If you were leading, on the very last lap of a final and there was one person behind you and you had a mirror on your sled, who would you not want to see right behind you? My brother. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just, kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. Actually, it would be great for him to actually be behind me. Probably either Mac 80 or Blaine for sure. Yeah, yeah, they're tough, especially when it's coming to that last lap. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you learn a lot from those guys. Um, who helps you come to the racetrack every week? Um, my stepdad, Scott, my brother, Hunter's my teammate, um, my boyfriend, Jaden, my mom, um, our, our, he's basically like my uncle, his name's Beaver, um, and then all of our sponsors as well. Yeah, got to have good people behind you to make this happen, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. We're going to play the FXR Fast 10 game. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you? Mm -hmm. Do you prefer gold or silver? Gold. Should I tell Jaden that? You should. <laughs> 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 All right. If you traveled, would you go to Ireland or Hong Kong? Mm, Ireland. Racquetball or tennis? Tennis. Canoe or a kayak? Canoe. Do you prefer Coke or Pepsi? Oh, Dr. Pepper. I don't like either. Mm. Can I answer that? <laughs> you can, but the answer's wrong. <laughs> so, uh, couch or a recliner? Mm, uh, a couch. Corvette or a Mustang? Corvette. Paper or plastic? Paper. Uh, are you <laughs> bad breath or body odor? Which is worse? Um, bad breath. Okay. And the big question, Reese's or Snickers? Reese's. Good answer. Yeah, nice that's job. My favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck this weekend. I hope you're safe. I hope things go well. Uh, love to see you in the final. So yes. best of luck. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you.
So our Cubex intermission break is done and we are back with the FXR 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Race number 19 is up on the track. And two races in one here, a front row race and a back row race, two separate classes. Front row is the junior two sprint 600 final for five laps. The 53 is Alyssa Gusta out of Stead, Manitoba. The 59 is Hunter Johnson out of Drayton. Now junior one sprint class is going to be the 99 of Levi Lurkey out of Hallock. The 43 is Carson Peterson from Lancaster, Minnesota. The 11, Ben Meyer from Michigan. The 60 is Braxton Cassidy out of St. Genevieve. And the 10 is Derek Meyer out of Michigami, Michigan. Getting set to go racing here. And here we go. Looks like Alyssa Gusta with the whole shot in the Junior 2 Sprint 600 class. The number 53. That is a Hool chassis looking pretty good. As they race on down the back straightaway into turn number three and four. We've got a red in turn number four. A crash in turn number four. Good news, the rider is okay and up. All right, great news. We will try to get you an update from turn four, but we understand the rider is up and okay. So very good news from turn number four. Perhaps in a bit of pain, but our safety crews, Johnny on the spot to lend a hand as usual. But the rider did pop their head up and wave. So that is some good news from turn number four. All right. At the crash scene in turn number four, the 53 Alyssa Gusta was... Involved in that crash, she is out of Stead, Manitoba on the Hool chassis. Now, she is okay, just a bit sore, so they're just taking time to let her collect herself. Alyssa Gusta on the 53 into the bales in turn number four, but okay, we are told. So, we'll have a brief delay here and get that sled back to the pit area likely and resume in race 19, Junior 2 Sprint 600s. And Junior once Sprint 380s, both finals for five laps. Good time to thank some of our sponsors here. They include FXR, Beaver Truck Center, Beaujager Co-op, Beaujager GM, Cobra Enterprises, Travel Manitoba, Moosehead, Twisted T, Access Credit Union, Beaujager Home Hardware, Oak Bank Hearing Center, RM of Brokenhead, and the Town of Beaujager. All right, we're going to send them to corner four and resume in race number 19. Just heard the call on the radio, so we are good to go, we're told. Quick cleanup in turn four. Alyssa Gusta on the number 53. Back to the pit area. She will be okay, we are told, so that is good. Next up, race 20, 21, and 22 are all Pro Champ 440 races. All right, resuming here momentarily. 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR here at the beautiful co-op community complex. We heard some of our dignitaries earlier talking about the new lighting system and the new sound system. And this place, well, 
You would know it, Anthony, from Cooldown.tv. This place is truly first class. They do a fantastic job with everything. Production, the facility is top notch. The washrooms are clean. The food is great. The beer is cold. The coffee's hot. I mean, you just can't say too much about this great, great facility. All right, so the 59, Hunter Johnson out of Drayton will start on the front row, and here we go. And here comes the 10 and the 11. That is Derek and Ben Meyer, respectively, out of Michigan in the Junior One Sprint 380 class. Hunter Johnson leading. The only competitor left now in the Junior 2 Sprint 600 class. And the number 11 is Ben Meyer. Junior 1 Sprint 380 class. Passing the Junior 2 Sprint rider which doesn't matter, they're both leading their respective races. Number 10 second in the Junior One Sprint class, that of course is Derek Meyer. One to go for the 11 on the 59. Hunter Johnson on the 59 in the Junior 2 Sprint 600 class and the 11 Ben Meyer in the Junior 1 Sprint 380 class here in race number 19 of a total of over 40 races, 46 in fact here today. Ben Meyer wins the Junior 1 Sprint. The 59 Hunter Johnson wins the Junior 2 Sprint. The number 10 second. Derek Meyer in Junior 1 Sprint 380. Carson Peterson and the 60 coming across. That is Braxton Cassidy in the Junior 1 Sprint 380 division. Next up, we're going to some pro champs. All right, Pro Champ Racing coming your way here momentarily, and we'll have the lineup for you. That is on deck. Looks like we're going to have the 35 of Dylan Barron starting in this one out of Anola, Manitoba. 2012 Wall Brothers Racing chassis. The 79 is Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl out of Drummondville, Quebec. 21 years racing for Sabrina Blanchett. First time ever in Beaujeu, however. First female ever to win a Pro Champ 440 final. That was in Woodstock. Winner of all the IFS races at Eagle River. Two-time winner at Adirondack and races dirt track, lightning sprints, and midgets. A three-time Speedster champion sponsored by Samson Racing, Giffers Racing, Umatech, Deco Racing, Choco Design, Kilometers Plus, and RM Stater. Quinn Whitechuck is out of Beauzeur on the number 26, doing a real nice job in this class. Get some practice time living in the area, I am sure. That is a Hool chassis with a Rotax engine on board the 26 of Quinn Whitechuck out of Beauzeur. Former F500 and Sportsman 600 racer. Sponsored by Funks Toyota and DNR Strecker Farms along with La Brokery Lumber. The 87 is Madison Phillips, and Madison Phillips comes to you from Drayton, North Dakota, not far from here in Bozizier, just across the border. On a Johnson Racing chassis, the 54 is Calvin Peterson out of Eden, Wisconsin. 
54 does a nice job here in this very competitive class. It is tough. Under 20 years old is the 54 of Calvin Peterson, sponsored by Skidoo, Pier Technical, Tennyson and Associates, and Woody's. Calvin Cook is on the number 75 out of Dayton, Minnesota. That is a Wall Brothers racing chassis. Real good looking sled. Saw it in the pit area and it is fantastic looking. Tanner Foss is from Middle River, Minnesota on the 111. Matt Gady, of course, keep your eyes on that number 28. 28 Matt Gady is out of New Germany, Minnesota, the current world champion in Eagle River, two time in the F3 class, in fact. And the six Gavin Peterson is out of Chisago City, Minnesota on the number six. So that'll be your lineup for your pro champs coming up here. Gavin Peterson racing over nine years, started on 120s back in the day. Under 20 year old rider, not even 18 yet in fact. A very accomplished motocross racer is Gavin Peterson. So this guy knows how to get around racetracks. Sponsored by FXR, Woody's Deco, Bikeman Performance and Skidoo. Fifty-four, rolling up and ready to go. Calvin Peterson out of Eden. Calvin Cook, the 75, joins the party, as does the number six, Gavin Peterson is there. The 111, Tanner Foss is there. Keep your eyes on the inside, the 28 of Matt Gady. Here we go. Sabrina Blanchett and Gady go first into the turn one and two section of the track. And Gady on the 28 looking pretty sharp, but here comes the 79 of Sabrina Blanchett. Triple one is in the third spot. That is Tanner Foss out of Middle River. 96 miles per hour on the previous lap. So far, Matt Gady out of New Germany, Minnesota, getting it done. Towing along the 79 of Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec. First woman to ever make the front row at Eagle River. Twenty-six have it a pretty good run there. That is quite an old white shot rather out of Bozager. Right yellow number twenty-six getting down the racetrack quite nicely right now. White flag is out for Gady. Sabrina Blanchett second, Foss. White Chuck as being now challenged by the 54. Gady very, very controlled through turns three and four. Checkered for the 28 of Gady. Sabrina Blanchett will be second, Tanner Foss, White Chuck, then the 54 of Calvin Peterson to round out the top five here on cooldown.tv. Race 20, Pro Champ 440 is in the books. Next one, and the next one after that, Race 21 and 22, both Pro Champ 440 races. You'll wanna stay tuned in to cooldown.tv or here in Beauzeger if you're live with us. All right, race 21 up on deck. Griffin Leepak will ride the number one out of Hartford, Wisconsin. That is an Arctic Cat. The 39 sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing and FXR. This is Tom Olson. The 102 is Blaine Stevenson, also a Wall Brothers Racing racer, sponsored by FXR. The three is Danique Lambert out of Sorel, Tracy, Quebec. The 21, Tyler Obie, that is a beautifully 
prepared sled out of Beauxjeux, Manitoba, 2018 Skidoo. Matt Bennett will be on the 233 out of New London, Wisconsin. The eight, Travis McDonald, don't count him out. He is out of Lockport. The number five, Ross Olsen is from Fargo. And the 48, Philippe Roy Lalonde out of St. Jude, Quebec. That is your lineup for race 21, Pro Champ 440, round two, heat two. Heat three will follow this one. Thirty-nine of Olson takes off like a shot. Tom Olson on the Wall Brothers Racing FXR thirty-nine. What a great start. Here we go down the front chute. Travis McDonald putting all kinds of pressure on the leader. McDonald to the inside, getting at it. Some great racing provided by our local favorite out of Lockport. 96 miles per hour. McDonald rides on by the 39. So top three, the eight, the 39, and the 102 of Blaine Stevenson. Travis McDonald has had a pretty good weekend so far and looking good on that bank's mine number eight. Four spot is Danik Lambert. Griffin Leepak currently fifth on the track. Good battle in the back of the pack, but not quite as good as up front right now as the leaders are setting a torrid pace. White flag is out. McDonald, Olson, Stevenson, Lambert, and Leepak, the 48 in the sixth spot. That is Philippe Roy Lalonde. 99 miles per hour. How about it for the local rider? Travis McDonald gets it done. Tom Olson, Blaine Stevenson. Round out the top three. What a good race. That was fantastic to watch. Travis McDonald certainly finding some speed here this weekend. Travis McDonald picking up third place last night in our USSA Pro Star Cup final and winning that one right there, that heat race, race number 21. So good job by Travis McDonald, the local rider, as we get set to go with race 22 in the Pro Champ 440s. The 220 is G-Money Gunner Stern out of West Chicago, Illinois, last night's feature winner. The 39X, real fast here. Justin Peterson is out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin on a Hool chassis. The 15 is Hunter Sears out of St. Francis, Minnesota. Riding the 31 is Will Garceau from Wisconsin. The 59 is Hunter Johnson out of Drayton, North Dakota. The 24 is Jordan Sobetsky with a win in the last chance qualifier. Did a great job on that Sobetsky Enterprises 24. The 916 is going to be Harrison Lefevre out of Hibbing. And the 55, Brett Keelback from West Pine Ridge. Tension in the pit area. Next up, race 23, IFS 340X final. Great start by Gunnar Stern. The Red Bull Skidoo has been almost unbeatable here this weekend in Beauxjeux. And up front once again is G-Money Gunnar Stern out of West Chicago. The Red Bull Skidoo is flying.
39X in the second spot. Try to catch up to your leader, Justin Peterson out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin. Riding that Hool chassis in the second spot currently. Good racing for third, fourth, and fifth into turn three and four. Green flag still being displayed on the front chute. Hunter Sears is on the number 15 third. 55 is Brett Keelback at 97 miles per hour. Nine sixteen is off the racetrack. Harrison Lefaver out of Hibbing stops on the inside apron of the front chute. Gunnar Stern has the wick turned up and continues to lead this one. Thirty nine X fifteen fifty five. And 24 in the top five. Good racing action right now for third, fourth, and fifth. The 55 is on the move. Winner is Gunnar Stern. Justin Peterson second, the 55. Is third, Brett Keelback, the 15 fourth, and the 24 fifth of Jordan Sobetsky. Wow. All right, so if you have your lineup sheet in your hands here live at the Co-op Community Complex, race 23 is coming up. This is the IFS 340X final. We're supposed to start five and race for five laps in this final. We are only gonna start two, because three are out and we're gonna race two laps. That sounds pretty fair, Anthony. What would you say? Two racers, two laps. So we're gonna scratch the 64 of Joe Koch, the 12 of Jamie Grenier, and the 61 of Tom Olson. <laughs> 35, Dylan Barron should be in this one, we're told, as will be the 13 of Mike Stratichuk out of Southeast Saskatchewan. So just two laps here in race 23, while well, these riders are gonna be thrilled Less fuel, less carbon tax. Who wants to pay that anyway? Two laps instead of five, so we're gonna shorten this one. Two competitors, two laps. Less tax. Dylan Barron out of an Olo with the whole shot. Mike Stratichuk out of Southeast Saskatchewan on a 1981 moto ski. Riding along in the second spot and there's the white flag, the 35 Dylan Barron out of Anola, Manitoba, riding that 79 Skidoo. Unchallenged so far. Your leader working through turns three and four. Must be quite a breeze over in four with that wind blowing. Checkered flag is out, no question about that one. Dylan Barron out of Anola takes the win. 13, Mike Stratichuk on that good looking motor ski will be second out of two. So that'll do it for race 23. Dylan Barron takes the win in the IFS 340X two lap final. All right, three in a row we're gonna have with the Black Cat Wear Parts F500 class. This is race 24 on your schedule. And we're just going through some changes.
All right, so we got our changes done now for race 24, just listening in on the radio. Scratch the 113 of Hannah Westland and the 213 of Aaron Davies. So in the middle of all that is the 99 of Connor Bauman, the 9 Dane Klinger out of Athens, Wisconsin. Riding the 685 is Tanner Davy out of Middle River. The 3 is Danny Lambert. The 33C is Mike Schultz. And the 14 is James Schneider out of Beausager. All right, looking good, I think, here for race 24. Scratch two riders, and we're getting set to go. Green, green, green. Here we go. Dane Klinger on the number nine, looking pretty sharp off the starting line. Six eighty-five in the second spot. That is Tanner Davy from Middle River, Minnesota, riding a nineteen eighty-nine Polaris here in race twenty-four. Black Cat Wear Parts F five hundred action round two heat number one going right now. Seventy-eight miles per hour on the previous lap. Klinger, then the six eighty-five. The ninety-nine is in the third spot. That is Connor Bauman out of Wisconsin. 1990 Polaris mounted rider. 80 miles an hour last lap. Danique Lambert out of Sorel, Tracy, Quebec, riding along in the top three. Nice looking number three on the racetrack. That is a 1991 Polaris all the way from Quebec. Ninety nine in the fourth spot. Connor Bauman. The number 14 on the track is James Schneider out of Beausager. 113 coming across. And checkers for the number nine. Dane Klinger picks this one up. 685, Tanner Davy second, three. Danny Lambert, then the 99. Connor Bauman. And the 33C of Mike Schultz out of Thunder Bay around out the top five. Six unofficially, the 14 of James Schneider out of Beausager. Hanna Westland coming across the line in the last spot. Now, she was scheduled to be scratched, but did appear on the racetrack. So scratch your scratch, I guess, because that wasn't a scratch. Hanna was definitely on the track. Race 25, Black Cat Wear Parts F500, round two, heat two. 29 is going to be Brad Harrison out of Enola, Manitoba on an 89 Polaris. Riding the number 48, this is Rich Mork out of Eagle River, Wisconsin. The number 54 is Tom Kielbach out of Tyndall. The 9, Stefan Kerrigan, is from Winnipeg on a 91 Skidoo. The 21 is Zach Rogers out of Wausau. The 98 is Nick Kurth from Wausau. And out of Roseau, Minnesota, riding the 003 is Brody Wenslov. That is a 1990 Polaris getting set to go. Well, whether you're watching on the internet or live here at Co-op Community Complex, we hope you're enjoying today's races. All part of the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR.
Keep your eyes on the 48X of Rich Mork out of Eagle River, Wisconsin on the 90 Polaris. Has been running extremely well this weekend here in Bozeger. Always a formidable competitor. Your leader right now is the 21. That is Zach Rogers, followed by the 29 of Brad Harrison. 82 miles per hour for your race leader. Ninety-eight is Nick Kurth out of Wausau, Wisconsin, currently running third on that number ninety-eight. Forty-eight X Rich Mork fourth. Fifty-four Tom Keelback is fifth. Fifty-four in the forty-eight X battling. As is the nine, that is Stefan Kerrigan. White flag is out. We got ourselves a race. The 29, Brad Harrison out of Anola leads this one. Zach Rogers on the 21 battling. Good racing in the top three here. 98, Nick Kurth out of Wausau, Wisconsin. And checkered flag is waving. Harrison, then the number 21 of Rogers, followed by the 98 of Kurth. 54 and 48 X round out the top five. Rich Mork on the 48X. That was race 25, Black Cat Wear Parts F500 Round 2 Heat 2. That is now in the books. Race 26 coming up next. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 Round 2 Heat 3 for 5 laps. All right, we are told we were gonna add the 15 of Kyle Omachinski to this one, but we are not. So, here's your lineup. The 34 is Colton Niewalny out of Medford, Wisconsin. Riding the 22A is Colton Abraham out of Wausau. The 17 is out of Beauzeger on an 89 Polaris. This is Jared Sackvey. The 135 is Blair McDonald from Ildachine, Manitoba. 34X is Kale Bellow out of Wappen, Wisconsin. And the 95 is Jerry LePage from Marillo, Ontario. We are scratching the 113 of Westland and the addition Kyle Omachinski. So Kendra Westland and Kyle Omachinski will be out of race 26 in your Black Cat Wear Parts F500 class. Getting set to go racing. Trying to get everybody lined up here evenly as we get set to go. 22A and the 34 get a good start. Looks like the 34 around the corner first. That is Colton Niewalny. The 22A is Colton Abraham. 17 battling for second. That is Jared Sackvey. Jared Sackvey, of course, out of Beauzeger. Here comes the 95, Jerry LePage into the third spot. The 17 of Sackvey is second. 34, Colton Niewolny out of Medford is in the number one spot. 85 miles per hour.
34X is fourth. That is Kale Bilau. Some good action here in race number 26. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action on track. Number 17 of Jared Sackvey trying to reel in the leader, the 34 of Colton Newolney out of Medford, Wisconsin, but not having much luck. The 95, Jerry LePage, a veteran here in Beauziger out of Marillo, Ontario. In the third spot, not having much luck, reeling in second. White flag for the 34, the 17, and now the number 95 of LePage. Kale Bellow in fourth. And a good battle, looks like the 22A is looking for fifth, Colton Abraham out of Wausau. Checkered flag being displayed on the front chute. And it's Niewaldi followed by the 17 of Sackvi, the 95 LePage, the 34X of Kale Bellow will be Fourth, then the 135, Blair McDonald, followed by the 22A, it looks like, unofficially. Race 26 in the books, Black Cat Wear Parts F500, round two, heat three for five laps is done. Couple more races before a Cubex grooming break. And those two races will be race 27 and race 28. Race 27 will be your super stock 340 free air. 340 liquid and 440 fan combo. All right, so get this one. We are going to combine, we're just told, race 27 and 28 as a final. Race 27 and 28 will be a final. So. We're going to combine these two races. The 84 is going to be Chad Bartok, the 685, Tanner Davey. Riding the 36 is Garrett Bennell out of Watrous, Saskatchewan. The 223, or rather 233 is Matt Bennett from New London. The 14 is Alex Manchalenko. The 724 is Brian Axman. The 553 is Zach Stenberg. And from race 28 into this one, the 23 is going to be Will Manchalenko out of St. Malo. 44X is Randy Oliver. 38 is Oren Baxter. Riding the 165 is Justin Habing. 27 is Josh Wood. And the 73 is Bob Bachman out of Minnesota. So, the way this looks, race 27 and 28 were originally heat races. They're now one big main event, the final. This ought to be a good one. Still, of course, those Superstock 340 free air and 340 liquid along with 440 fan. Good start for the 165. Justin Habing at the controls out of Dugold, Manitoba. That is a 1976 Polaris. Lots of sleds on the track here. This will be our final race now before our Quebec intermission and grooming break. Thirty-eight showing the way. Oren Baxter is out of Mayor Thorpe, Alberta. 233, Matt Bennett second. 165 getting passed by the 685 now. Tanner Davey is on that 685 and Tanner is out of Middle River, Minnesota on a 78 Polaris. Forty-four X is fourth. Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Seventy-five miles per hour. Two 
two, three, three remains in the second spot. There's the number 27. Doing a good job. Josh Wood out of Saskatchewan. That is a 1978 Kawasaki. Quite spread out on the racetrack now. 38 continues to lead. Oren Baxter, 233. Matt Bennett. Third is the 44X of Randy Oliver out of Oshkosh. Leader all by his lonesome. And there's your winner, 38 Oren Baxter, taking the big win in that Final, Superstock 340 free air, 340 liquid and 440 fan combo race. Changed from two separate heats from race 27 and 28 to a final. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, now it is time for another intermission break. Quebec grooming break coming right now. So we invite you over to the concession area, get yourself something hot to eat or hot to drink and also visit the Moose Den. Great line of CPTC promo wear available over there. We are going to take a short break to get the racetrack cleaned up and continue with action here in Beauzeur. Full service at your local co-op means extra service at no extra cost. We'll fill your tank, clean your windshield, and get you on your way. And full service is part of why co-ops are able to provide good jobs to more than 25,000 Western Canadians. Whether it's rainy in Victoria, sunny in Regina, cold in Edmonton, or even colder in Winnipeg, full service, it's a co-op thing.
Whether investing in your child's future, planning your dream retirement, or saving for a vacation in between, Access Credit Union has the right investment solution for every stage in your life. Open an investment online in minutes and get sound advice tailored to your needs. As members ourselves, you'll feel comfort in knowing we have your best interest at heart. Access Credit Union. Invest in you. We've got guys from automotive, we've got guys from heavy duty. Everybody helps everybody. Every day I get to come into something different, so it's always fun and exciting. You'll do everything from a PDI up to a full engine rebuild. It's hard work, but it's good work. Are you looking for a great place to work? Brett Richter here, talking with the champs today. It's kind of a fun day. We're going to get to uh, visit with some of our champ drivers here and going into the CPTC weekend. So it's Friday morning and uh, talking this morning with Danik. Now, let me get this straight. Is it Lambert or Lambert? Lambert. Lambert. Yeah. Yeah, I got to put that French yeah. aspect on there. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Welcome to the CPTC. Thank you. Yeah, long trip for you. Yeah, it's uh, almost 30 hours trip with the old truck. So, yeah. It's, it's a long trip, but it's all worth it. Yeah. I don't know that anybody puts the miles on or the nights away from home that you do to come out and do this thing called ice oval racing. Yeah, it's pretty wild. We are the only one from Quebec who do the old tour. So we're basically on the road for three months. I was home maybe 14 days all winter since Christmas. So wow. yeah, it's, it makes it difficult, but like I said, it's worth it. I'm just living my dream. And it's really an interesting community of people, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. You you meet people from all around. You know, I got now friends from all around states. Now in Manitoba, it's 30 hours from home, but I got friends that I'm as close as my friends at home. So it, it makes it special and funnier, I think. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, the the general public, when they see you line up a, out there for a heat race or a final, I think the vision is that you're just competitors, that you're not really friends. But you're friends with so many of them. How do you turn off the friendship and turn on the competitive edge? Well, I think I'm not the one who turns it off the, the most. Like, sometimes I won't risk a move because I know it's my friend on the outside. But <clears throat> I'll always be as competitive with someone that I really love or someone that I'm not close at all. It's just, you know, you got to trust the guy next to you. You know that you'll enjoy a beer with him after the race, but you also know that he can keep his lane and drive as hard as he can with you. So it, I think it makes it, you feel more safe on the track having friends. That's how I feel because I think that I have, well, I think that I'm friends with most people on the track, so I feel safer like that. Yeah, that's that's really good insight to that. If there was a mirror on your snowmobile, if there was, and you could use it, and it was the last lap of a big race and you were in the lead, who would you least like to see right behind you? Blaine Stevenson. Really? Yeah. You never know what it's going to be his next move. He can diamond the corner, he can come in really low, and the sled going to stick there like no one can do. 
So yeah, you never want to see Blaine on the last lap behind you. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you wish you had a mirror or no? No. No. <laughs> way too way, way too stressful. <laughs> way too stressful. Awesome. What are your expectations for the weekend? Uh, pretty high because we uh, the last two weekend we did a podium in Valcourt. We won in Woodstock. I know Woodstock was not USSA, but still. Uh, the sled super fast. I feel confident, so I'm going for the podium and maybe the win. Awesome, that'd be great. Yep, yeah. that'd be great. Are you running only champ this weekend? Uh, no, I'm racing at 502 with my dad. So you're gonna have a bunch of laps this weekend. Yep, but it's good to learn the track as the weekend goes. The more lap, the better, I think. It's even it's not the same driving style at all. We always learn something different every time out, so I right. appreciate it. Right. So uh, there's a rumor going around that you're liking this uh, Hollywood nickname. Well, I used to hate it, not going to lie, when it first came out, but now I'm just used to it, and I just play the game with it, and it's fun. So now i got to admit that I kind of like it. <laughs> <laughs> Will we see a Hollywood on your hero cards pretty soon? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I got brand new one for those who want to come and grab one Saturday. I guess we're going to have a driver meet, meet and greet. greet, so I'll have the brand new Hollywood hero card for them. There you go. And tell me a little bit about the Mohawk on the helmet. Uh, this is all about uh, one of my buddy passed away this summer. And he used to race for Paul, who's my team owner. And uh, I always thought it, it looked goofy, but he always raced with one on his helmet. So I kind of put one on mine for a tribute as my buddy because it's the first winter he's not racing because he was still racing F500 with me. Okay. And he was probably my best buddy around the track. So it's, it just made me feel like he's with me. I'm sorry uh, to hear that. I had no idea. It's all right. Yep. So that's, that's, that's quite a tribute. Yep. And I think it, it helps the general public understand how committed these, these racers are to their sports. So that's a fantastic thing. Um, we're going to wrap this up with something called the FXR Fast 10. Okay. I have eight cards. Pick a number from one to eight. Three. Of course. <laughs> Why didn't I know that? <laughs> All right. Ten quick questions. You ready? Yes. You prefer gold or silver? Gold. Would you rather go to Ireland or Hong Kong? Ireland. Would you rather play racquetball or tennis? Uh, racquetball. Canoe or a kayak? Uh, canoe. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Couch or a recliner? Couch. Oh, couch? Yeah. Corvette or a Mustang? Oh, Corvette. Paper or plastic? Paper. Bad breath or body odor? I, the one I want, but I don't want. <laughs> uh, f <laughs> a body odor. <laughs> Reese's peanut butter cup or Snickers? Reese. Awesome. Good job. Good luck this weekend. <laughs> Thank Hope you. have a ton of fun. Yeah. That's Danik Lambert, driver of the number three Weatherhill racing machine.
We're back at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR, race 29 on deck and rolling to the starting line. Race 29 will be the Junior 2 Stock Fan 380 final and the Junior 1 Stock Fan 380 for 10 to 12 year olds. Now in the race 29, Junior 2 Stock Fan 380 class, the 43 is Carson Peterson, the 60 will be Braxton Cassidy. And riding in Junior 1 Stock Fan 380, the 11 Ben Meyer, the 99 Levi Lurkey, and the 115 of Eli Hagen out of Rozo. So two races rolled into one here. So Junior 2 Stock Fan 380 for 13 to 17 year olds and Junior 1 Stock Fan 380 for 10 to 12 year olds on the track. Forty-three, Carson Peterson leading the Junior 2. The 11, Ben Meyer out of Michigan looking pretty good in Junior 1 Stock Fan 380. So your riders on the track that are one and two are leading each of their classes respectively. Carson Peterson on the 43 leading Junior 2 Stock and Junior 1 Stock being led by the 11 of Ben Meyer. There is the 99 of Levi Lurkey, second in junior one stock fan. The 60 is second in junior two stock. 67 miles per hour. Tension in the pit area next race. We will be moving to some more pro champ heats. Ben Meyer continues to lead the Junior 1 stock fan. Carson Peterson on the 43 leads Junior 2 stock fan. They are in two separate classes. It looks like they're racing together. I guess they're racing together, but two separate classes. Two races rolled into one here. There's Eli Hagen on the 115 out of Roseau riding in the Junior 1 stock fan 380 class. like to welcome you once again to the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. Whether you're tuned in on the internet to cooldown.tv or live with us, glad you're here with us and enjoying racing. So the 11 and the 43 winning their classes. Carson Peterson on the 43 winning the Junior 2 Stock Fan 380 class. Ben Meyer winning the Junior 1 Stock Fan. The 99 Levi Lurkey out of Hallock second in the Junior one stock fan, Braxton Cassidy now second in junior two stock fan 380, coming across the finish line. It looks like the 115 of Eli Hagen out of Roseau coming across as well. Eli Hagen, Roseau, Minnesota on a 2002 Polaris. All right, here we go. Race number 30 on your schedule. Pro Champ 440, round three, heat one, five laps. On the 916, we should have Harrison Lefevre out of Hibbing, Minnesota on a wall chassis. The 21 is Tyler Obi from Bozizier on a skidoo. Riding out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba on a wall chassis, the number 55 is Brett Keelback, and the 75 from Dayton, Minnesota, a wall chassis as well. This is Calvin Cook. Number 16, not competing in this one. The three is Danique Lambert out of Sorel, Tracy, Quebec. The 87 is Madison Phillips out of Drayton. The 24 is Beaujolais' Jordan Sobetsky, sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises. And Griffin Leepak is out of Hartford on a 2023 Arctic Cat. Pro Champs getting set to go here.
Skelton number three, Danique Lambert out of Sorrel Tracy having a pretty good weekend. It is time for race 30, Pro Champ 440s. Here we go. Great start for the number 24. Jordan Sorbetsky with the whole shot. Great job, the rider out of Bozager. Winning the last chance qualifier last night. But he's got company. Here comes the number 55 of Brett Kielbach. Great racing up front here. 95 miles per hour on the previous lap. Ninety-seven miles per hour. They are moving out there. Tyler Obi out of Beauzeur on the 2018 Skidoo, looking good. Ninety-eight miles an hour. We're getting quicker. White flag for the 55 and the 21. In the third spot is the three of Danny Lambert, the skeleton machine out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec. So Betsky fourth out of Beauzeur on the number 24. That'll do it, the 55, 21 and three, one, two, three, Sobetsky fourth. Good racing action there in race 30. Pro Champ 440 brought to you by FXR. That was round three, heat number one. Nice job by Brett Kielbach on the 55 out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba. That is a wall chassis. And that one was quick that time. After a great start by Beaujajur's Jordan Sobetsky on the 24, the 55 ends up taking the big win. Race 31 on deck, Pro Champ 440, round three, heat number two. All right, race 31 coming up now on your monitor, Cool Down TV, providing all the video and audio here. Race 31, Pro Champ 440. 54 is Calvin Peterson out of Eden, Wisconsin. The 31 is Will Garceau out of Wisconsin. The 39X is Justin Peterson out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin. The number five is Ross Olson, and Ross is from Fargo, North Dakota on a skidoo. G Money Gunner Stern starts on the 220 out of West Chicago, Illinois, sponsored by Red Bull. The 28 is Matt Gady out of New Germany, Minnesota, current world champion in F3. The 48 is Philippe Roy Lalonde. The 102, Blaine Stevenson, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing. And the 6 is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City, Minnesota. G Money Gunner Stern up front and in command. He has had that view for most of the weekend. Matt Gady in the second spot, the 39X right there. Justin Peterson in the third spot. Blaine Stevenson throwing that 1 0 2 around in the fifth spot.
Gunnar Stern continues the lead with Gady in the second spot. Justin Peterson third, the 102 fourth, 99 miles per hour. White flag coming out for your leader, G Honey. Fifty four is in the fifth spot currently. One hundred miles per hour even. Calvin Peterson fifth on the fifty four is your leader working out of turn number four now. Once again, G Money Gunner Stern with the win. Matt Gady second on the twenty eighth. Thirty nine X Justin Peterson out of Campbell Sport, Wisconsin in the third spot. Stevenson, then the 54. Calvin Peterson. Well, Pro Champ 440 racing done. We have one more to go. It'll be round three. Race 31 done. However, race 32 coming up next. All right, race 32 on your schedule. We do have a scratch. 35, Dylan Barron will be a scratch. All right, so scratch Darren, or rather Dylan Barron. <laughs> Dylan Barron in the 35 will get scratched from race 32. Travis McDonald will be in this one. He is out of Lockport, Manitoba on his 2020 skidoo. Travis McDonald having a nice weekend so far. Tom Olson is on the Wall Brothers Racing, number 39 out of Greenbush, Minnesota. The 15 is Hunter Sears. The 59, Hunter Johnson is out of Drayton, North Dakota. The 111 is Tanner Foss out of Middle River. The 26 is Quinn Whitechuck. The 233 is Matt Bennett from New London, Wisconsin. And the 79 is Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl out of Drummondville. Good field of Pro Champs for race 32. Pro Champ 440's getting set to get turned loose here. Uh-oh. I think we've got a jumper. Well, there could have been five jumpers, but one had to go first. Always one had to go first. Unless all five left at once, but I doubt it. We'll find out here in a moment from our track officials here in race 32. Next up, race 33, your Sportsman 600 final will get reduced from seven to five laps. So we're gonna cut two laps out of race 33 coming up next. Matt Bennett on the 233 out of New London, Wisconsin on the Polaris. He is the jumper. Great start for Sabrina Blanchett. Troubles for the number 15, Hunter Sears out of St. Francis, Minnesota. Just on the other side of the finish line to the side of the front straightaway. Tough break for that 15, pretty Fast rider here this weekend. Travis McDonald out of Lockport giving chase to Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec. She has been rocket fast all weekend long. Tom Olson challenging on the number 39, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing and FXR. 
make it an in, making it an interesting race in the top three. Ninety eight miles per hour. Rider off on the back straightaway. Looks like Olsen into the second spot. Dropping Travis McDonald on the eighth to third. Your winner, Sabrina Blanchett. Out of Drummondville, Quebec. Tom Olson right there out of, in the second spot. Travis McDonald, third unofficially. A good race in Pro Champ 440. That was race number 32 on your schedule. We have a total of 46 races on the schedule here. Race 33 coming up will be your Sportsman 600 final. And that's going to go from seven laps to five laps as we load up the number 15 of Hunter Sears out of St. Francis, Minnesota, onto the tow sled. And we will continue with race action here momentarily at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. One eleven, getting some help on the back shoot. That is Tanner Foss out of Middle River, Minnesota. Rider of the 2023 Polaris. Hagen sponsored one eleven. Tough break. All right, awaiting the arrival of race 33 in the Sportsman 600 class. Then we will go to race 34, Pro Formula 3, round two for five laps. All right, Sportsman 600 final for five laps. Randy Oliver is on the 44X. The 13 is John Hall from Bozizer. Riding the 779 is Colton Kreitzer out of Drake, Saskatchewan. The 08 is Brad Artimowicz from Dryden, Ontario. And the 179 should be Jason Mackey from Lanigan, Saskatchewan. And we're racing once again. Left front ski coming up pretty high on the 13 of John Hall as he heads on down the back straightaway now. 779 Colton Kreitzer doing a nice job. Colton is out of Drake, Saskatchewan on a 2000 Polaris. Forty four X Randy Oliver from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Eighty nine miles per hour on the previous lap for your race leader in this five lap sportsman six hundred final. Thirteen forty four X and seven seven nine in that order. John Hall, Randy Oliver, and Colton Kreitzer, your top three. Pretty good race into turn three. Quite competitive right now.
Whoa, the 44X really challenging on the outside of the front shoot. Now dives to the inside of the 13 and inside he goes. The 44X is your new leader. Randy Oliver, wow, great pass. Almost got her done on the front shoot, but waited till the inside of turn two. We've got ourselves a great race here. White flag, one to go. So right now in the lead is the 44X of Randy Oliver. Uh-oh, the 13 with a bobble, causing the 779 to get upset a little bit. 44X, 13, and 779 in that order in the top three. Colton Kreitzer, the 779, finishes third. Hall second, Randy Oliver first. And the 08 crosses Brad Artimowicz out of Dryden in the fourth and final spot. Awesome job by those riders in the Sportsman 600 final. All right, race 34 on deck. This is Pro Formula 3. This is the World Championship class at Eagle River. Of course, our Canadian Championship class is in the Pro Champ 440s. Pro Formula 3s were started out to give the factories a little more involvement as they look more like a showroom sled, a modified snowcross type sled, if you will, with suspension modifications allowed. And here's how they line up in race 34. The 21 is Zach Rogers out of Wausau, riding the 39, sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing out of Greenbush. This is Tom Olson. The number 28 is the current World Pro Formula 3 champion. This is Matt Gady, and Matt is out of New Germany, Minnesota. The 220 is Gunnar Stern, G Money, out of West Chicago, riding the Red Bull Skidoo. The 102, sponsored by FXR and Wall Brothers Racing, is Blaine Stevenson. The six, Gavin Peterson, is out of Chisago City, Minnesota. Riding the 129 is Joey Birch out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan. The 221 is Reed Klinger from Athens, Wisconsin. The 29, Andy Shoemaker. And the 34 is Haven Hooverett out of Bad Axe, Michigan. Yes, Bad Axe, Michigan. Pro Formula 3, round two for five laps, set to go here. Looks like the 39 of Tom Olsen to the outside and takes over the lead down the back shoot as they string out just a little bit. Twenty-eight in second. That is Gady. One twenty-nine. Joey Birch in third. Ninety-two pulled off the track. Twenty-eight is your leader, Matt Gady, out of New Germany, Minnesota. Thirty-nine, Tom Olson out of Greenbush, second. There's a one-zero-two of Blaine Stevenson, Wall Brothers Racing sponsored. One-zero-two is third.
Andy Shoemaker on the 29. Fourth, we got a 129 and a 29 that look about identical out there, so. Katie will take it. Tom Olson, Blaine Stevenson, 29 and the 129 in that order by the looks of things unofficially. Andy Shoemaker is out of Michigan on the 29. The 129, Joey Birch out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan on the 2023 Polaris, rounding out the top five in race 34. Pretty good one, Pro Formula 3. Round two for five laps is in the books. Race 35 coming up next. This will be your Super Mod 440 free air and liquid final. All right, five laps was the distance. It is now four laps, we are told. Four riders, four laps. So here's how they line up in race 35. Sabrina Blanchett will be on the 79, the 223, Adam Braun. The 165 is Justin Habing. And Kyle Ruskowski will be on the 118. Kyle Ruskowski out of Eveleth, Minnesota on a 1973 Polaris. Good looking 223 of Adam Braun out of Winnipeg. That is a 1981 Kawasaki on the outside. Uh oh. That's trouble. Kyle Ruskowski a little bit excited at the starting line. An itchy trigger finger, as they say. Keep your eyes inside of the front row. Sabrina Blanchett out of Drummondville, Quebec with a big hole shot. Side by side in turns three and four. Sabrina Blanchett well out onto the front straightaway already. 165 and the 118 doing some battle here. 84 miles per hour is the 118 on the back shoot going on by. Try to chase down Sabrina Blanchett, Supergirl, out of Drummondville, Quebec. Ninety miles per hour even on the previous circuit for Sabrina Blanchett. First time ever at the CPTC facility. Had an awesome time talking to her and her crew on Friday afternoon during practice. They have got a great program put together. Real serious racers with a great program, great equipment, and a big time dedication to the sport. That'll do it, the 79 will win it, Sabrina Blanchett. Second is the 118, Kyle Ruskowski out of Eveleth, Minnesota. There's the 165 of Justin Habing coming across out of Dougald and the 223 of Adam Braun out of Winnipeg, a 1981 Kawasaki. Next up, we will move to our last chance qualifier in Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. Here's your lineup. For race 36, the 22A is Colton Abraham, the 685 Tanner Davey. 
Riding the number 95 out of Murillo, Ontario is Jerry LePage. The 135 is Blair McDonald from Ile de Chaine, Manitoba. The 48X is Rich Mork from Eagle River, Wisconsin. The 99 is Connor Bauman from Wisconsin as well. The 9 is Stefan Kerrigan from Winnipeg. The 14, James Schneider, is out of Beauzeger. And James is on a 1989 Polaris. On a 1997 Yamaha, the 33C is Mike Schultz from Thunder Bay. And rounding out the field from Strathcona, Minnesota, the 113 is Hanna Westland on a 1992 Polaris. All right, three will qualify into the Black Cat Wear Parts F500 final. Mike Schultz comes up on the 33C out of Thunder Bay, Ontario. Here we go racing. Good start for the number 14, but that number 14 now heavily involved in traffic is the 22A of Colton Abraham. Takes the early lead into turn three and four. They are sorting it out now in that corner as they come down the front straightaway. 95, Jerry LePage in the second spot. 48X, Rich Mork out of Eagle River is third. Ninety-nine moving up. The 99 is Connor Bauman out of Wisconsin. Six eighty-five is currently in third. That is Tanner Davy out of Middle River, Minnesota. But right now it is all twenty-two A Colton Abraham. and the 48X are fourth and fifth. Connor Bauman and Rich Mork out of Eagle River, Wisconsin here in your Black Cat Wear Car Parts F500 last chance qualifier. White flag coming out next time around. Record flag is out for the 22A of Colton Abraham. Second to LePage, 685 Davy, the 99, and the 48X round out the top five. The 99 is Connor Bauman. The 48X out of Eagle River on a 1990 Polaris is Rich Mork. Rich Mork on the 48X rounding out the top five. That'll do it for race number. 36 last chance qualifier and only three go to the main event all right race 37 outlaw 600s this is the final for five laps coming right now and they will use a rolling start like dirt track sprint cars and midgets these outlaw 600s have full roll cages seats and seat belts a little safer for the older set although i have seen some younger people running these things I think they're a little bit safer with the roll cages, and here's how they line up. One is Joe Schneider, the four Ron Teroff, 
Aboard the number 18 is Aria Plasky. The 19 is Chris Plasky, both out of St. Germain, Wisconsin. The 36 is Tom Stoltman. The 3XL is Shorty Curran. Driving the 71N is Donnie Neubauer. And the 44W is David Webster. Getting set to go. Outlaw 600 final. Five times around. Green flag is in the air. Joe Schneider tosses the number one into turn one and two and looking pretty good so far. A battle for second and third. Number four is being driven by Ron Teroff out of Lisbon, Iowa. The 19, Chris Plasky. Area Plasky fourth in the number 18 here in the Outlaw 600 final. One nineteen and four, your top three. Area in the four spot. Seventy one N of Donnie Neubauer slowing on the front chute, and will likely be heading to the pit area with that number seventy one N. Boy, troubles for the number one. That is rare. Joe Schneider, the points leader in the USSA throughout the year. Out of St. Germain, Wisconsin, has that outlaw chassis parked on the inside of the front straightaway. White flag is out for Chris Plasky. There's the four of Ron Teroff. Area Plasky in the number 18. 36 still going. Tom Stoltman, as is the three. XL of Shorty Curran. And your winner, it's official. The number 19, Chris Plasky out of St. Germain. Ron Teroff, second. In the number four. Aria Plasky with a top three here in the Outlaw 600 final. Tom Stoltman in the 36, the 3XL, Shorty Curran out of Browntown, Wisconsin, coming across, as does the 44, that is David Webster from Monroe, Wisconsin. Well, there is a rare sight. That number one has dominated the Outlaw 600 class. That is Joe Schneider out of St. Germain. A great shot being provided by Chris at cooldown.tv. Also understand there's some debris in turn four. And we'll get ready now for what looks to be a Cubex intermission break. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now's a great time to get up, stretch your legs, get yourself something hot to eat or hot to drink. Our beer garden is open. That is called the Moose Den. Get a moose head or a twisted tea over there. And we're going to be back with you with more racing action here at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Enjoy the Cubex intermission.
At Co-op, we do things a little differently. Because we're not owned by big wigs in far away places. We're owned by our members, ordinary people supporting local business. We provide local jobs, support local producers, and give back to local causes in our community. It's just part of what makes us a different kind of business. And we think that's pretty cool. Co-op, you're at home here. We've got guys from automotive, we've got guys from heavy duty. Everybody helps everybody. Every day I get to come into something different, so it's always fun and exciting. You'll do everything from a PDI up to a full engine rebuild. It's hard work, but it's good work. Are you looking for a great place to work? Hi everybody, Brett Richter back here at the CPTC, looking forward to, to a fantastic racing in the 440 Champ Division. The uh, championship that we are running for on Sunday is one of the most prestigious in the ice oval racing world. And coming to compete for it this year is none other, none other than Sabrina Blanchet. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. First time here in, in yeah. Beausajour? Yeah, first time. Yeah. yeah. It's a big track. Oh yeah, it's big, it's wide. Yeah, yeah. they feel good out there? Yeah, it was the first time uh, today, so yeah. It feels really good. Good. Yeah. How many sleds did you bring with you? Uh, we bring three sleds. And what yeah. classes are those? Uh, vintage 340, uh, Vintage 440, and the Pro Champ. And is this your first year on the Pro Champ? What? First year on Pro Champ? Uh, with uh, this sled, yes, but yeah. no. Okay. No. All right. And this is a new sled to you? Yeah, exactly. How does it feel? Really good. Yeah. Uh, we tried uh, both sled uh, before the season, and uh, we uh, we take the wall one, yeah, okay. TNN. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. That's, uh, is that Nick Van Stridonk's old yeah. sled? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and he was fast with that, so you have something to yeah. keep up to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's interesting to see you with a red hood, though. Yeah, first yeah. time, yeah. You want to put some yellow spray paint on there and change the color? Maybe next year, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> one thing at a time. Yeah. Yeah, good. How long of a trip for you to get here? I know you flew, but how long did it take the 
I the think team? Uh, they take about 30 hours, wow. something like that, yeah. Wow, good. Yeah. Um, your season has been changed like everybody else's because of weather. Yeah. You, know, you didn't come for the Vintage World Championship on a shortened schedule. Did you miss that? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I wanted to, to be like, try to be back to back mm -hmm. world champion, but with the bad condition, uh, we just decide to stay home and come back here next year. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, good for you. Yeah. Are you still racing cars in the summer quite a bit? Yeah, I race a sprint car, lightning sprint. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep, you enjoy that. Oh, yeah, it's fun. You prefer the car or the snowmobile? I would say the snowmobile, yeah. Yeah, still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Still, yeah. Good for you. You're a tough competitor out there. We're, we're <laughs> excited to have you here. Um, what sponsors and people help you get to the racetrack? Um, Samsung Racing, of course, and uh, our gift for for the motor and clutching and everything. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, Darren Van Hoof and his son, and my boyfriend, and uh, Patrick. So a couple guys come here to help, yeah. Yeah, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Good for you. I wish you a ton of luck this weekend. I hope things go really well for you. Thank you um, so much. I, I always love seeing the ponytail out the back of the helmet, <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like a trademark, but it's a lot of fun. So we're going to end with the FXR Fast yeah. 10, okay? Okay. You ready? Yeah. Do you prefer grapes or raisins? Raisin. Leggings or jeans? Legging. Do you like food mild or spicy? Mild. Do you prefer Under Armour or Nike? Nike. Do you prefer brains or beauty? Brains. Would you rather go to an art museum or a history museum? History. Would you rather be accurate or fast? Fast. Would you rather sleep in a hammock or in a bed? Bed. And would you rather have ketchup or ranch? Ketchup. And I know I'm going to ask you Reese's or Snickers, and we've had this issue before, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you still want me to ask you? Yeah. You're going to say Snickers? Yeah. yeah we're going to end it right here. That's <laughs> enough. So <laughs> driver of the number 79 Pro Champ, Sabrina Blanchett. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, and in the concessions as well as the Moose Den Beer Garden, we have a lucky 50-50 ticket number for you. And today we are going to give away a grand total of $1,520. Here is the winning ticket number. And this is claimable over at the Moose Den at the Beer Garden. $1,520 to this ticket. Ticket number one three five five three one ticket number one three five five three one you have just won fifteen hundred and twenty bucks and you can claim it at the moose den congratulations and thanks to the knights of columbus for all their hard work in the 50 50 draw here this weekend All right, we are back live here for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR, our corporate sponsor. Awesome to have them along with us here again in 2024, a local Manitoba company that has gone worldwide and done a great job. All right, now we are at race 38. This is the Women's Formula 500 final. Five laps is on the schedule currently. We do have some changes coming your way for the rest of the schedule. Total of 46 races on the schedule for the day. We are at race 38. Race 38, here's your lineup. The 44 is Marilee Peterson out of Lancaster. The 113 is Hannah Westland from Strathcona, Minnesota. Riding the 112 is Ella Gust from Greenbush. The 434 is Miranda Peterson out of Lancaster. The 757 is Hannah Cook from Dayton, Minnesota. And the 685 is Janessa Isney from Middle River. Janessa Isney on the 685 from Middle River. That is a 1990 Polaris. Five laps, Women's Formula 500 final, here we go. Good start for the 434 of Miranda Peterson. 113 of Hannah Westland in the second spot, or was in the second spot and just got passed. Hannah was second going through turn one and two, almost won the race to the title of hole shot, but did not quite win it as Miranda Peterson a little too quick on the 434. 44 is second, that is Marilee Peterson out of Lancaster. Big battle between the 112 and the 113. Ella Gust is on the 112 out of Greenbush, Minnesota. But right now, up front, it is the 4-3-4 of Miranda Peterson looking good. Next race up, we will have last chance qualifying action in the Pro Champ 440s. All right, incident, of course, over in turn three and four. 
A little bit of signal trouble here on cooldown.tv. The wind is blowing like absolute crazy out here in Beauzeur for those of you that are at home watching on your computers. And it's either starting to rain or snow. I'm not sure of what. Really dicey weather here coming through Beauzeur. You know, it's been funny. We've been here when it's been like minus 30 some years in March. Been here when it's been... Almost t-shirt weather, yeah, like about plus 10 Celsius, so well above freezing. That's, of course, why they went to the 14 inches of ice or so. Some years we don't have snow and you couldn't race, so ice is usually pretty reliable, but with the winter we had this year in Manitoba, at least it was, well, really, really warm. Very few cold days in our winter here up in Manitoba and very little snow which is strange on both counts. All right, so it looks like everything's cleaned up over in turn number three and four. We are racing in the Race number 38, that is the Women's Formula 500 final. Race number 46 on the day will be your 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championship race with the Pro Champ 440 final. That one's scheduled right now at least for 15 laps. Go through the 50-50 ticket again for $1,520 in case it hasn't been claimed at the Moose Den. Winning ticket number 135531. 135531 for $1,520. Chris Seymour out on the platform from cooldown.tv. Cleaning the lens. I can see your fingers there. There you go. Perfect. All right. Plastic lenses, we're told, on those cameras, and they can get a little bit weather sensitive at times. Want to remind everybody listening on 88.5 FM at trackside parking to please keep your headlights off during competition. We do not want to blind the riders and drivers, so please do not have your headlights on. It is raining, all right, okay. I'm nestled up here in my comfortable booth. And Anthony from cooldown.tv. And some other guy who's yet to be identified, but will likely be asked to leave quite soon. Chris Seymour down on the camera pod, and he says it's raining pretty good down there. Drive carefully tonight when if you're going home. Don't forget, though, following our last race, we'll go over to the rec center and we will have our dinner and awards presentation. We do that each and every year. And if you've never attended, the food is absolutely delicious and it's a fun time to meet some of the riders and mix and mingle and have a few drinks. So that is available. That's just across the parking lot to all of our left if we're looking at the front straightaway. Be north and a bit west across the parking lot. That is where that rec center is, so you want to check that out following today's races. It takes a little while to get all the checks prepared for all the racers, but once that gets done, we go over, have a nice meal, and do some presentations, and meet some real nice people over there, and it's the last race of the year, so good way to send winter off. All right, so waiting the arrival once again of race 38, your women's Formula 500 final. Here we go. 
Women's Formula 500. Here comes Riley. I think he's in there. Or is that Jared? Could be Riley and Jared. Could be just Jared. It's gotta be somebody, the thing's moving. Or it could maybe be a self-driving electric car. That's what the world needs. <laughs> no more carbon tax, wonderful. All right. There is the 434. And that, of course, is Miranda Peterson out of Lancaster, Minnesota. The 44 is Marley Peterson. Marley Peterson on the 44 out of Lancaster. And here we go racing. Good start for the 113 of Hanna Westland. Picking up a spot at the green flag. White flag is out, one to go here in your Women's Formula 500 final. Four laps down, one to go. 79 miles per hour for the 434 of Miranda Peterson out of Lancaster, Minnesota. That is a 1989 GPR chassis. Miranda Peterson is going to win it. Second spot is 44, Marley Peterson out of Lancaster. Hanna Westland on the 113, unofficially third. There's the 757 of Hannah Cook coming across the start finish line. Hannah Cook on a good looking machine out of Dayton, Minnesota. That is a 1989 Polaris. The Cooks run a real nice racing program. They got a great looking trailer and even nicer looking sleds. Nice to have the Cooks here from Dayton, Minnesota with us this weekend at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Once again, a reminder to all of our trackside parkers, we need those headlights off at all times during competition. Race 39 on deck, Pro Champ 440 last chance qualifier. Now, here's the skinny on this one. Only three will go to the main event. The winner of this race goes to the front row of the main event. The other two qualifiers will start on row two of the main event. So you gotta be in the top three here in order to get the job done. 48 is going to be Philippe Roy Lalonde out of St. Jude. The 15 is Hunter Sears. The 21 is Tyler Obi out of Bozager. The 1, Griffin Leepak from Hartford, Wisconsin. The 26 is Quinn Whitechuck. The 102 is Blaine Stevenson riding the 54. This is Calvin Peterson. The 75 is Calvin Cook. The 24, Jordan Sobetsky. And the 6 is Gavin Peterson. This was a hotly contested race yesterday with the 24 of Jordan Sobetsky winning it after crashing out early. Only the top three go to the final and the Canadian Power Toboggan Championship, so you know this one is extremely important. Looks like the number six leading the way here. That is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City. Look at him go in turn three and four. They are moving along. 54 in the lead. Calvin Peterson out of Eden. 
99 miles per hour and yet another lead change as they charge into turn three and four. One oh two Blaine Stevenson is a the leader. There's the twenty one of Tyler Olby on the skidoo. That machine is absolutely gorgeous. I saw it in the pit area this morning and battling for a transfer spot here to the sixty second Canadian Power Toboggan Championships race. Fifty four in the twenty one second and third. This one is tight. Calvin Peterson, 101 miles per hour. Wow. Blaine Stevenson has flipped his shield up. I could see him trying to clean it throughout the race. Well, he has now flipped it up because he's in the lead. As your leader comes out, Looking at the checkered flag. Blaine Stevenson's gonna transfer. Tyler Obi and the 54 of Calvin Peterson will transfer to the Canadian Power Toboggan Championship race here. That was some awesome action. That'll do it for your last chance qualifier in Pro Champ 440. Looks like the 15 of Hunter Sears needing some assistance over there. That is the middle of the back straightaway. Hunter Sears out of St. Francis, Minnesota. Ran pretty decently here this weekend on the big half mile oval. 27 pro champs were registered on or by Friday. We'd like to thank all of the competitors in the pro champ division for making this another great weekend here in Beaujolais. I just love this place. It's so much fun to come to. What a facility. All new lighting, new sound system, warm buildings, great food in the concessions. As the 15 heads off the track, a tough break will not make the main event for race 46, the Pro Champ 440 final. But yes, today we will crown yet another Canadian Power Toboggan champion here in Beaujolais after race number 46. Pro Formula 3 final. This is the World Championship class at Eagle River, Wisconsin. Two years in a row has been won by Matt Gady. It's only been in existence about three years. But this is your Eagle River World Championship class. 102 is going to be Blaine Stevenson out of St. Cloud, Minnesota. 129, Joey Birch will be on the Polaris out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Out of the Wall Brothers Racing Camp, also sponsored by FXR, the 39 is Tom Olson. The 221 is Reed Klinger from Athens, Wisconsin. The 28, Matt Gady, your current world champion, will be out of New Germany, Minnesota. Matt is on his 2023 skidoo for this Pro Formula 3 final. The number six is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City, Minnesota. Riding the 220 is Gunnar Stern out of West Chicago, Illinois. The 29 will be Andy Shoemaker. The 21, Zach Rogers. And the 92 is Haven Bouveret out of Bad Axe, Michigan. This one's scheduled for seven laps. Pro Formula 3 final. 
This ought to be a good one. Looks like the 39 of Tom Olson jumps, so he will go to the back row. A little bit of a space left in row number one now as we get set to go racing. Pro Formula 3 style, here we go. It is tight in turn one and two. As they begin to string out just a little bit, they are flying down the back straightaway and into turn number three and four. Looks like the 29, we think. Ninety-seven miles per hour. We have an Andy Shoemaker on the 29 and a 129 Joey Birch. So we're gonna try to zoom in on those numbers. They are very hard to read. 102, Blaine Stevenson up front, the 39. Looking pretty strong. 100 miles per hour here. They are clipping right along. Stevenson, your current leader. But here comes the 39. Look at those teammates do battle. Wow. Olsen had to go back to the second row and is still running that thing like crazy. Olsen and Stevenson followed by Gady. Stevenson Gady. One twenty nine fourth, Joey Birch, then the twenty nine of Andy Shoemaker. White flag is out. One to go. Number six. Coming up to join the party, that is Gavin Peterson out of Chisago City. 101 miles per hour. Olsen is gonna take the win, followed by Stevenson Gady. The 129 will be fourth, the six and the 29, very close at the finish line. We'll try to get you an official update in that top five. What a great job by Tom Olson out of Greenbush, the Wall Brothers Racing FXR entry. Jumps the start early, but more than makes up for it quickly on that number 39. 102, Blaine Stevenson out of St. Cloud, Minnesota on his Wall Brothers Polaris looking good as well. Those teammates battled in turn one and two. Olsen assumed the lead and did not look back. All right, time for race number four in the Jerry Bunky Cup. We do four races throughout the weekend, two Saturday, two today. Overall points determines the winner. <coughs> Jerry Bunky Memorial Challenge, sponsored by Sobetsky Enterprises Limited, PJ Materic Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Hildebrand Sod Farm, Rantech Industrial Limited, Sport Parts Incorporated, and Baxter Ranch. 
Just three competitors in this one. 80 Joe Presta is there, of course. The seven and the 79. Jerry Bunky Cup up on the racetrack now. Looks like the 80 of Joe Presta out of Ladywood, Manitoba, leading the charge. Joe Presta on the 80. His last year's champion. The 79, Supergirl Sabrina Blanchett in the second spot. But being challenged. 98 miles per hour on the previous lap. Speeds are certainly high today. Ryan Gibson battling for second and third with Sabrina Blanchett. Seems to get a real good run in turn one and two and has taken second, but Blanchett faster on the back straightaway on the outside gets second place back. What a race that is for second and third. Joe Presta takes victory, followed by the 79 and the seven. So Sabrina Blanchett narrowly beating the seven at the line for the second spot. Good racing, that was a short one, only three competitors, so they raced three laps. Next up, race 42. Black Cat Wear Parts F500 final for seven laps. <coughs> and here's how they line up in race number 42, Black Cat Wear Parts F500 final. The 34 is gonna be Colton Newalney, the nine, Dane Klinger. The 29 is Brad Harrison. The 21, Zach Rogers is out of Wausau, the 98, Nick Kurth, is out of Wausau. The 54 is Tom Kielbach. The 17, Jared Sackvey. The 3 is Danny Lambert out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec. Riding the 34X is Kale Bellow. The 22A is Colton Abraham. The 95, Jerry LePage, is out of Marillo, Ontario. And the 685 is Tanner Davey out of Middle River, Minnesota. All right, here comes the 34. That, in fact, is the 34 of Colton Neil Walney. We have a 34X in this one, too. That is Kale Bellow out of Wappen, Wisconsin. Once again, two 34s in this race. Colton Niewalny and a 34X, Kale Bilau, which is starting outside that row in the front. 89 Polaris mounted rider, the 22A pulling inside now. Colton Abraham out of Wausau, Wisconsin. And here we go, we're racing. Brad Harrison around the outside challenging the 22A of Colton Abraham. But it looks like Abraham with the whole shot. Colton Abraham out of Wausau, Wisconsin, looking good on the outside. We have got a race into turn one and two. Look at this. Dane Klinger is on the nine in the second spot. 83 miles per hour in this F500 final. The nine new leader. Third, Brad Harrison. 
34 is fourth. That is Colton Ewalny. Great racing up front here in the F500 final for FXR. Look at this race between the 22A, the 29, and the 34 of Colton Niewalny. They are not giving up. Nine still leads it. Dean Klinger on the nine, but the race is for second, third, and fourth. Danny Glambert in the top five here. But the leader already flying through turn three and four. Number nine, Dean Klinger is out of Athens, Wisconsin, taking the white flag on that 1990 Polaris. 22A and the 29 are second and third. The 34 pressing hard. Dane Klinger will take the win in the F500s. Looks like the 29, then the 34 unofficially for second and third. Brad Harrison on the 29 is out of Anola. 34, Colton Niewolny out of Medford, Wisconsin. Your unofficial top three in Black Cat Wear Parts F500 action. That is the end of race 42 of a total of 46 races on the day. Don't forget the dinner and awards presentation coming up at the rec center that is just across the parking lot from here, a little bit northwest of the grandstands. You can buy your food tickets at the gate at the front door as you come in, have some drinks, have some delicious dinner, and of course, enjoy the awards presentation. All right, race 43 coming up on your schedule. And we have a couple of riders in junior one out here. They are the number 11, Ben Meyer, and the 10 of Derek Meyer. The 23 is Dylan Fox out of Balmoral, Manitoba on an 89 Polaris. The 44 is... Marley per Peterson, rather, out of Lancaster, Minnesota. The 112 is out of Greenbush. That is Ella Gust. The 434 is Miranda Peterson from Lancaster. And the 44 is Ethan Clark out of Beausager. Good field here. We got a couple junior ones here. Ben Meyer and Derek Meyer. Second and third from the outside. Junior 2F500. Final for five laps. We got a jumper. That is the 44, apparently. Marley Peterson out of Lancaster on a 2023 Westland chassis. Oh, you think that okay? That could be. There is two 44s in here. Could be Ethan Clark too. There is two 44s in this race. Ethan Clark and Marilee Peterson. All right, so we'll try to sort that one out for you.
23 looking real good. That is Dylan Fox out of Balmoral, Manitoba. 82 miles per hour for your race leader on the number 23. We got a rider off a sled on the back straightaway. Okay, it's one of the 44s. That could be either Ethan Clark or Marilee Peterson. All right, so it appears the rider is okay back there. A pair of 44 is involved in this race, so we will be missing one, I do believe. Race 43 on the track, Junior 2 F500 for 14 to 17 year olds. This is the final five laps. All right, fantastic timing and scoring, letting me know that the 44, the gray one, as they refer to it, is Ethan Clark out of Bozizier, and that is the rider that crashed on the back. So we can stroke the 44 off the list. The other 44 out there is Marley Peterson out of Lancaster, Minnesota on a 2023 Westland. So that's sorted out. Junior 2 F500, 14 to 17 year olds on the track. Next race, race 44. This will be a final for the Superstock 340 and the 340 liquids and 440 fans. Then we'll go to the ATVs, then a grooming break, then come back with the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships race. Dylan Fox out of Belmoro. Have our junior ones there, Derek Meyer and the 11, Ben Meyer. There's the 434 coming back to the line. That is Miranda Peterson out of Lancaster. And the 44 is Marley Peterson from Lancaster. El August is on the 112 from Greenbush. Having trouble refiring the 10 of Derek Meyer, the junior one out there. What a flag man Riley Baker is, eh? That's full service. Runs the flags, helps them start their sleds. I don't know if that number 10 is going. That is an awful lot of pulls. Tough break for the 10 of Derek Meyer. Out of Michigami, Michigan. They will remove that sled. See, I told you Riley does it all. Look at that. He wants to get going, he says. All right. As we get set to go here, race 43, Junior 2 F500 final. Great start for the 23 once again, Dylan Fox out of Balmoral. Dylan Fox speeding away here in this one. Number 11 out there is Ben Meyer out of Michigan on the 1990 players, a junior one sled. Number 
434 is Miranda Peterson out of Lancaster. And we've got a crash in one and two, but it appears the rider is okay. Back up on their feet. I think that is the number 11, we do believe. And that would be none other than Ben Meyer, if that's the case. Taking a look at the cooldown.tv instant replay up here. Into turn one and two they go. A little bit of a bounce for the 11, getting sideways. Losing control, and yep, up and over. Sled actually didn't go over too bad, and neither did the rider. So fortunately, the 11, Ben Meyer, is okay. And that'll go up on the recovery sled, it looks like, and be done for the day. So the 10 and the 11, the junior ones, are out of this one. The 10 of Derek Meyer on the front chute, and the 11, Ben Meyer, that's going to get pretty busy at that trailer in a hurry. Two sleds incoming. Once again, we'd like to thank all of our great sponsors that were part of our Jerry Bunky Memorial Challenge. They include Sobetsky Enterprises Limited, PJ Materic Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Hildebrand Sod Farm, Rantech Industrial Limited, Sport Parts Incorporated, and Baxter Ranch. Looks like Dylan Fox on the number 23, gonna lead these racers here to the green flag. We got the 434. That is Miranda Peterson in second. But no question about it, Dylan Fox does not wait at all when that green flag drops. Dylan is quick. Twenty-three, four, three, four in the top two. 44 is third. That is Marley Peterson on the 44. 81 miles per hour on the previous lap. White flag is now out for the 23 of Dylan Fox. Speeding away from the field. Miranda Peterson. These riders at 83 miles per hour on that last lap. Dylan Fox, nice and smooth through turn three and four. And Dylan Fox will be your winner, Junior 2 F500. Miranda Peterson, the 434 will be second, third, the 44, Marley Peterson. There is Ella Gust on the 112 out of Greenbush, Minnesota, riding a 1989 Polaris. That is the conclusion now of race number 43. Race 44 and 45 coming up. Then we will go to a quick grooming break and then, of course, come back with the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. All right, race 44 has already been combined and done earlier in the program, so we're going to skip that and go right to the ATV Open, we're told. Race 45, ATV Open final, five laps. Riding the 17 is Austin Lewandowski out of Winnipeg. The 22 is Mike Verbruge out of Garson, Manitoba. The 44 is Ethan Clark from Bozizier. 
and the 27 is Lynn Sather from Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Aboard the 14 is Rob Clark out of Bozizier. Also out of Bozizier is the 7 of Ryan Gibson. This is a 1986 Honda. And the 29 is Corey Johnson out of Oak Bank. Corey is on a 2007 Yamaha, so it's time for the ATV Open, our last race before a Cubex intermission break. Lynn Sather on the 27 slides in and tries to assume the lead. We've got a late starter. The number 14 is Rob Clark out of Bozizier. <coughs> Your ATV open scheduled for five laps in this final. Great racing action up front. 72 miles per hour into turn number one. Good battle for third and fourth place here down the back straightaway. That is one long back straightaway. If you've ever had the chance to stand in staging and look down into turn three, wow. The speeds these riders can get are phenomenal. Looks like the seven up front. That is Gibson. Ryan Gibson out of Beausager, of course, on an 86 Honda. Lynn Sather out of Detroit Lakes on the 27. The 22 is Mike Verbruge out of Garson. Ticking down the laps here. Twenty-two getting a run on the twenty-seven now. Mike Verbruge running at the twenty-seven of Lynn Sather and see if we can get that pass done here. Great racing between the 27 and the 22 for second and third. Your leader is still the seven of Ryan Gibson out of Bozizier. And checkered flag is out. It's gonna go to the number seven. Ryan Gibson followed by the number 27. Lynn Sather, the 22, Mike Verbruge will finish third in that one. And that'll do it for your ATV Open Final for five laps. The end of race 45 is now. And now we will take a quick intermission break here. Cubex intermission break, in fact. And we will groom the track and get ready for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Really looking forward to seeing the Pro Champ 440s, the final race of the day, coming soon right here for FXR. We're going to be back with you momentarily here in Beaujeu.
had the great pleasure of meeting John Hankey back several years ago at the Spring Banquet for the USSA Pro Star Series. John was really excited because he was going to be stepping up in divisions and going to the champ class and talked very excitedly about the conditioning he was going to do in the off season and the sled preparation and the fact that he was going to go up and join the big leagues. Having John as a member of the Pro Champ 440 class and most recently in the F3 class was a huge benefit to the sport of ice oval snowmobile racing. John's enthusiasm, his contagious smile, and his willingness to just be a part of the race series and to meet and greet every fan was almost unsurpassed by other drivers. When John came to Beaux-Azur in December of 2023, he had the preseason excitement like no other. He was here with his two sleds ready to practice in both the Pro Champ division and the F3 division with that eye on the world title coming up in Eagle River in a few short weeks. Unfortunately, on Saturday evening, John was involved in a very serious crash coming out of turn four in Beaux-Azur and ended up in the hay bales right near the grandstand. John's on-track assessment was very poor. He had sustained a very serious injury and there was obviously concern in the faces and the activity of the on-track personnel. It's hard to understate how serious John's condition was. By the time he was brought to a medical facility, John was given less than a 1% chance to survive the first night and then less than a 1% chance to survive the second night. But there aren't many fighters like John Hankey and John proved them all wrong. As of today, John has been through months of medical tests, procedures, rehabilitation. John is currently down at the Shirley Ryan Rehabilitation Center in Chicago and is continuously on the minds of the snowmobile racing community. We all wanted to reach out and tell John that we're thinking about him and we wanted to share our thoughts and concerns for John and his recovery. Thanks to the efforts of John's family, his mom, his dad, I was able to communicate with John. I put a couple of quick questions together and sent them on their way. Uh, John's mom, Susie, was able to take the questions to John at the facility and go through the questions and share John's answers. And I just thought it would be great for all of us to hear directly from John. The first question I sent to John was, since early December, the outpouring of love and support must seem overwhelming. Were you ever aware that you had such an impact on so many people? John responded, no, but it certainly helps me push through knowing that many people care. Secondly, I asked John, many people, including myself, consider you a modern day miracle. Is that a tough label for you? John responded, God blessed me. I'm just trying to embrace my second chance. The third question I shared with John was, your current story is being written with grit, determination, dedication, and hard work. Really a mirror to your racing career. Right now, what is the hardest part of your day-to-day -day routine? John responded as pretty much we all knew he would. I can't eat pizza. As a side note, unfortunately, John has yet to have the nerves in his neck return to full strength, so he has struggled with the ability to swallow and to speak. Really not being able to eat has been John's biggest day-to-day -day challenge. The fourth question I asked, if I could be your voice, John, for one minute, what would you like me to say to the snowmobile race community? John responded with the following, thank you for your donations, and your support. I wouldn't be able to rehab without it. Thank you, Riley, and the entire CPT staff for saving my life. Never underestimate safety gear like neck braces. And enjoy every lap. You never know when it might be your last. His mom shared that John got quite emotional making that statement. And since I know John really well, I had to close with the biggest question of all. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup or Snickers? John, with a smile on his face, responded, Reese's. John is currently down at the Shirley Ryan Rehabilitation Center in Chicago. We're going to share John's GoFundMe page and John's address if you're interested in sending him either a card, a note, 
a gift, a package, anything, or if you'd like to continue to donate to John's recovery. It's been a long road for a great guy and a great family. Hey John, it's Brett. I know you're watching. I know you well enough to know you're watching. You're a strong guy. We love you. We miss you. We care about you immensely. I know you'll do the work. I know you'll be back at the track, but I can't wait for that day to come. So hang in there, buddy. If you need any inspiration, you need any time from anybody, just reach out. The snowmobile community embraces your challenge. We can't do it for you, but we can do it with you. So hang in there, buddy. And when you get back, I don't usually share, but I'll share this one with you. Love you, bud.
We are just a couple of minutes away from the introduction of the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Two minutes away. Sixty second Canadian Power Toboggan Championship race. It is all on the line here in race number forty six for FXR. Daryl Gershman is our official track photographer. Got to get some great shots of this one, I'm sure, as he usually does. Shoots about 8,000 photographs a day, if you can believe that, and has to edit them later on and get them up on our various websites. So 
Hats off to Daryl Gershman, a long-standing member here at CPTC, and we do appreciate what he does. Also, of course, Andy Baker, 50 years of director, 55 years of volunteer. We've got some amazing people around this place, and that's what makes it tick each and every year. Many thanks going out to FXR, our corporate sponsor. Great to have them along each and every year right here. In Beaujolais, a local Manitoba success story is FXR, and we do appreciate what they do for us here in Beaujolais at the Co-op Community Complex. Just a reminder once again, ladies and gentlemen, in trackside parking, please shut off your headlights. We cannot have any headlights on during this event. This is the most important snowmobile race in Canada here in 2024 once again, and we want to do it right. So please shut off your headlights around trackside parking. Time for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. And here is your lineup as we get set to go. The 54 is Calvin Peterson out of Eden, Wisconsin on the skidoo. The 21 is Zach Rogers out of Wausau. Riding the 102 sponsored by Wall Brothers Racing and FXR. Out of St. Cloud, the rider is Blaine Stevenson. The 111 is Tanner Foss from Middle River, Minnesota. All the way from Sorel, Tracy, Quebec. The number three is Danique Lambert. The 55 is out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba, and is having a good weekend on his wall chassis. This is the 55 of Brett Keelback. Riding the Wall Brothers Racing FXR number 39 is Tom Olson out of Greenbush. The 39X is Justin Peterson out of Campbellsport, Wisconsin. And on the number 28, the F3 world champion, two-time in fact, out of New Germany, Minnesota. He is on a skidoo. The 28 is Matt Gady. Riding the eight out of Lockport, this is Travis McDonald on the skidoo. And all the way from Drummondville, Quebec, the number 79 is Supergirl, Sabrina Blanchett. And starting in the number one spot, out of West Chicago, Illinois, he rides the Red Bull Skidoo. This is G-Money, Gunner Stern on the 220. Who's ready for the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships? This is gonna be a great one. 15 laps is the distance as we get set to go. And here we go, we are racing. 28 of Gady on the inside, but it looks like the 220 coming out of the corner first. G Money Gunner Stern, who has dominated this weekend so far in the Pro Champ class, looking good once again. Ninety nine miles per hour on the previous lap. Gady in the second spot following G Money Gunner Stern. Two 
Tom Olson on the 39. In the third spot with Travis McDonald, fourth on the number eight out of Lockport. He has been strong this weekend. 102, Blaine Stevenson is fifth on the Wall Brothers Polaris. Great racing up front. Matt Beatty all over the 220. One hundred miles per hour, even on the previous lap, as your leaders working in turn four, and we've got a crash in turn number two, right at the exit of turn number two. Fifty-five has stopped in the middle of the back straightaway, but a crash at the exit of turn number two. Looks like the rider is up on his feet. All right, the crash out of turn two is the 54. That is Calvin Peterson out of Eden, Wisconsin. Tough break for the number 54 over at the exit of turn two on the outside bales. So we are going to have to restart the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championship race. There is the 55 initially stopped in the middle of the back chute. That number 55, of course, is Brett Keel back out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba on a 2013 wall chassis. All of the riders converged over in turn number two by the staging area while we clean up the mess at the exit of turn number two. Hope you've enjoyed the weekend here at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. A whale of a crew over here in Beaux-Azur and we've had a great time with lots of racers, in fact 27 pro champs registered this weekend very very impressive numbers and what a great sport this is sure fun to watch i'll tell you that our volunteer crew has done a wonderful job all the folks in the concessions in staging our timing and scoring just a very very good weekend of motorsports action here in bozager at co-op community complex so the riders discussing strategy with their crews over in turn two while we get the bales cleaned up and we will return to racing. Going to try to find out here how many laps we have in. It was scheduled for 15 laps. Thank you. We've completed four laps, we're told, of 11, or of 15, so 11 to go. Four down, 11 to go in this 15 lap race. All right, so it looks like we're cleaned up already. There is over 4,000 bales located throughout this facility and it takes an awful lot of volunteer work to get them placed and then replaced and fixed, etc. So hats off to all those people that work so hard throughout the weekend. Don't forget we will have our social and dinner at the rec center right across the parking lot following this event. Present some trophies, give out some money, have some great food and drink. It's gonna be a fun time over at the rec center. Many thanks go out once again, of course, to our sponsors of the Jerry Bunky Memorial Challenge. We'll present that trophy tonight over at the rec center. Those sponsors are Sobetsky Enterprises, PJ Materic, Auto Body and Glass, Springfield Chiropractic, Hildebrand Sod Farm, Rantec Industrial Limited, Sport Parts Incorporated, and Baxter Ranch. Up, oh, tough break for the 55, sponsored by FXR up on the tow sled. 
That is not good news for a rider that had a pretty good weekend. Brett Keelback showed some speed all weekend out of West Pine Ridge, Manitoba on that wall chassis, but that is loaded up and headed onto the pits. Four laps down, 11 to go. Staging over in turn four as Riley Baker, our head flagman, comes down the front chute and waves them down. We're ready to go racing. Here at Co-op Community Complex. All right. 220, Gunnar Stern out of West Chicago, Illinois. Working his way to the line. There's the 28 of Gady. The eight of Travis McDonald. 39, Tom Olson. The 102 is, of course, Blaine Stevenson. Getting set to go racing once again. Here we go. Stern with a solid start. Gady right there in the second spot. Gady has some speed into turn number three. Here they come at a four and down the front straight away. Travis McDonald on the eight. Hanging around, looking for the lead in third spot. We've got ourselves a race here at the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. Winner take all. Red flag. Looking like it's over in turn three and four, our safety crew heading over there. I did not see that incident, so we'll have to rely on a report or a replay. Ryder is walking around over there, but the sled obviously threw the bales. And we'll get your report from turn three and four just as soon as we can. Danique Lambert apparently is the one involved over there on the number three out of Sorel Tracy, Quebec. The Skelton Truck Lines number three into the bales, but we'll try to get you a rider report. Looked like he was moving around over there, so that is always good news. Anthony from Cooldown.tv mentioning it looked like he was walking around, so that is great news over in turn three and four. Snowmobiles can always be fixed. As our safety crew goes to work once again. Not sure if we got a couple of laps in that time. All right, we did get a lap in, so five are completed now. Ten to go, we're just told. So we are one-third through the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championship race here. Still lots of racing to do under the lights. And if this is your first visit this year here to Beaujolais and the CPTC, these lights were installed. We did use them in December a little bit and used them yesterday and today, and they are beautiful. This place lights up like the Daytona 500 at night when they got to run it. Yeah, 
All right, we're going to send them back out now, we're told over the radio. So getting set to go racing. All right, rolling once again down the back straightaway into turn three and four, getting ready to restart this race. Five laps down, 10 laps remaining here in Beausjour for FXR, the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Championships. And here comes G Money Gunner Stern on the Red Bull Skidoo. There's the 28 of Matt Gady. He would very much like to win this Canadian Power Toboggan Championship. The number eight, MPH Racing. Eight of Travis McDonald there. A pair of Wall Brothers Racing sleds, very well prepared. Lane Stevenson on the 102, the 39, Tom Olson out of Greenbush. Sabrina Blanchette, Supergirl out of Drummondville, Quebec. 111 of Foss, the 21, Tyler Obi. They are all out here and ready to go, and we're ready. Here we go. Racing down the front chute. Travis McDonald on the eight, holding on to the third spot. Chasing down second place. All the sleds doing a good job of staying a few lengths from each other so far. This is your 15 lap finale in the Pro Champ 440 class. Travis McDonald. Challenging the 28 of Matt Gady now. McDonald has had speed all weekend long and is looking good here. Cross flags, we are halfway through this one. Wayne Stevenson on the 102 in the four spot. Tom Olson fifth. Wall Brothers Racing entries, fourth and fifth. And they have some work to do here. Gunnar Stern is rocket fast here. Travis McDonald certainly not giving up on second spot. Matt Gady here. Fourth and fifth falling back just a little bit and it appears the leader might be getting away from second just slightly. Connor Stern is your leader. 111 is off the racetrack on the inside of the front straightaway at the entrance to turn one. Matt Gady still not given up on first place. Gunnar Stern, the number eight dropping back just a little ways. There's the 102, Blaine Stevenson. Sabrina Blanchett, 
on the number 79. White flag, one to go for the 220 of G Money Gunner Stern, who picked up the feature win in the USSA Pro Star Cup last night here. He did a great job being smooth and consistent. That is his trademark. Your leader coming out of turn four, and Gunner Stern is the 62nd Canadian Power Toboggan Champion unofficially here in Beauzeur. Matt Gady second on the 28, but what a great job by Gunnar Stern on the 220. No question about it. The class of the field all weekend long, he had that Red Bull skidoo ticking away real quick and had the job done very early here. We're gonna take a moment out now and get down out in the front straightaway for some presentations. Don't forget, for those of you that are headed towards the Moose Den, we will have our dinner and awards presentation across the parking lot here momentarily. Great dinner over there, great food. You'll want to check it out. Come on over for that after the races. Tickets are still available at the door. All right, so we have three, two, one down here on the front straightaway. 60-second running of the Canadian Power Toboggan Championships brought to you by FXR. Travis McDonald on the eight out of Lockport. I'll tell you, you had a pretty good weekend. There's a lot of speed in that number eight. Great crew, and the guys must have worked hard. Yeah, we fought hard this weekend. We had motor problems in our first heat yesterday, and we fought with clutch problems all day today. And Seemed to really find some for the final there. It was pretty rough out there, but uh, happy with the third place. Well, I know you're close to home here, and I know you love racing at this track, but what makes this place so special? Uh, there's really nothing like winning here at CPTC. It's the best track we race on year-round, and uh, it's just great to win in front of a hometown. All right, how about it, ladies and gentlemen, for Travis McDonald. Fantastic job. Now I'll move to the 28 of Matt Gady. Matt, fantastic weekend for you and an even better season. Man, you had your crew and these machines running great. Yeah, we uh, can't complain. You know, we finished uh, top two every single race except once when we got third. So, uh, uh, yeah, this champ's been pretty good all season. The F3's been awesome too. Uh, um, but, yeah, it was just a, a, a good year and a, a good weekend. And uh, I get, definitely got to give a big shout out to my crew. You know, they had both sleds working awesome. And uh, all my friends, family watching at home, my wife and kids. And uh, um, I wish they were here. But I uh, definitely got to give a thanks to uh, my sponsors as well. Skidoo, uh, Christian Brothers, Woody's, Good Ones Performance, uh, Nicola National Bank, Fly, The Ravine, and MJT Trucking. Uh, Rickard excavating. Um, it takes a lot to uh, make this sled go around the track, and uh, couldn't do it with all their help. Congratulations! How about it, Matt Gady, ladies and gentlemen, second here at the 62nd Canadian or Toboggan Championship. And now I'm going to move to the winner, G Money Gunner Stern on the 220 out of West Chicago. Man, you came out here yesterday. Looked fantastic and things just continued. Lots of preparation, but what a great job by your crew and yourself. Yeah, it's just, you know, I say it every time, but my crew is, is the one to thank, you know, they're, 
they're working so hard for me. It's uh, it's awesome to be get to go to these tracks with those guys and come out here. And uh, it's uh, I don't think you have to say it. You know, I like coming. Sure, the the fans here are great. I like the track. It's like my, my favorite track, for sure. Um, probably de definitely the most track we've had the most success at for sure. Um, I just can't thank everyone for that's uh, got me to this point. Um, it was definitely rough out there for sure. Um, it's definitely a Roughest Beaujolais track I think I've raced on, but that's what makes it interesting, right? So, <laughs> all right, let's talk a little bit about the lighting in this facility. What is it like, daylight, and then racing into the night like last night? Is it a big adjustment for your riders? Yeah, a little bit. Um, I think some people, uh, some racers like racing at night. Um, some like during the day. Right around now is this twilight. You know, it kind of gets dark, so you can't see as well. Especially today with the with that freezing mist. You know, I was out front and I was still wiping my shield. You know, it's. Everyone was having a, a hard time, but uh, you know the yeah, lights here help, especially when we run this late at night. You know we, we can depend on the lights a little bit. You know they do, they do a great job here. Um, I think all of us racers love coming here up here to race. Congratulations! How about it, ladies and gentlemen? Your Canadian Power Toboggan Champion, the 220 is Gunnar Stern. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on behalf of the entire staff here at CPTC, we want to thank you all for coming out. We want to remind you that, of course, we will have our awards banquet coming up in about an hour or so over at the rec center. Join us for that. So on behalf of the entire crew, we want to thank you all for coming out, and we hope to see you. Thank you very much, fans, and we'll see you next time at the Canadian Power Toboggan Championships.